We will call our meeting to order and recognize that we are holding our meeting on the unceded traditional territories of the Sushat and Hoopachesset First Nations. We have an agenda in front of us. Council, are there any late items to add? None? And anything additional from the clerk? No. Okay, thank you. Would somebody like to move approval of our agenda? So move, Madam Mayor. Second, Madam Mayor. All in favor? Carried. And we have minutes from the meeting held at 6 p.m. on December 10th, 2019 for adoption. Somebody like, is there a seconder? Second, and any questions or comments on the minutes? All in favor? Carried. So on to unfinished business. Um, of course, the intent of this meeting is to work forward our budget. Um, we do have a number of reports that we're going to go over. There'll be lots of opportunity for council to ask questions and then if any members of the public would like to ask questions or make comments, there is an opportunity toward the end of the meeting. So you do have to stick around, um, but we will welcome any feedback that people would like to offer. Okay, so um, getting started, we have the five-year financial plan bylaw in front of us with quite a bit of information and then a number of reports. The first one, Report A is from the Acting Director of Finance, 2020 to 2024 Financial Plan and Summary of Changes. Madam Mayor, the Acting Director of Finance has had to step out to deal okay. with a, a matter that just arose. Okay. Um, I can speak to this report. Sure. So the, um, the acting director's report essentially introduces that uh, this document that you just mentioned, the, um, the five-year financial plan. Um, if you think that scrolls up for me a little bit. Um, how about down? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the other up. Um, that, uh, that this is um, a, a living working document, so um, it's, it's um, not meant to be etched in stone. Um, and at every, at every meeting and between meetings, as, as we get sharper numbers or uh, we learn more about um, different projects and whatnot, you, you might see um, things change a little bit. So um, looking down at the background, um, the acting director is telling us that there's a net increase in this, this budget that you have in your hands now has changed a little bit since the last, one you, the last working document you received. Um, a net increase to capital projects of $100,000. In this version of the financial plan, um, the increase includes changes to the Third Avenue upgrade project. Um, cost estimates, estimates for that project have been increased by $500,000 based on engineering um, preliminary estimates. Um, the city is also making a grant application. Um, we think we could be eligible for $400,000 for that project. So there's a net difference of $100,000, um, and we can certainly talk about that um, in the capital um, in the review of the 2020 capital budget. Funding in the 2020 capital plan from Clay Mill and Clock Tower project is anticipated to be drawn from gas tax reserves. Um, in the previous draft budget, we'd shown those from general revenue and land sale reserves, respectively. And there's a summary uh, presented there of changes since the last draft document that you had in your hands at the January 13th meeting. Um, they include a $100,000 reduction in the anticipated operating expenses at McLean Mill. Um, an addition of a contingency for McLean Mill of $40,000. And um, we moved, as I said earlier, we moved the McLean Mill Dam project um, funding um, as instead of coming from operating um, in 2020, it now is identified as, as coming from gas tax reserves. And all of this, Madam Mayor, is subject to Council's uh, direction and approval. This is a draft document. Um, also, the City Works facility relocation project um, is $50,000 earmarked from gas tax reserves. You'll recall that at the January 13th meeting, Council received a report um, from McGill Engineering um, around the, um, the City Works facility and its uh, risk, um, seismic and tsunami risk, and Council directed that $50,000 be put into the draft budget for consideration. Um, the clock tower um, project, the um, the money had uh, for that project had been coming from land sale reserves. Now it's identified as gas tax uh, reserves, and there's no change to the budget, no impact to the budget of that change. Um, additions to the Third Avenue upgrade project, as I just said, um, there's a uh, we've 
increase the projected expenditures by $500,000 on that and showing a $400,000 anticipated grant for a net change in this budget from the, um, the previous one of $40,000. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be questions. Um, I think specific to, so we are going to go through the capital budget in full today, I believe. Um, if council chooses to do that. So um, some of these could be brought up there, um, but council is welcome to ask questions about the project specifically here as well if they choose. Are there, Councillor Corbill? Yeah, could the uh, CAO provide a little bit more information regarding uh, a fairly significant change to the Third Avenue upgrade? Madam Mayor, at, at the January 27th meeting, next Monday, you'll receive a staff report and an engineering report um, with some detail on that, on that project. Um, I can't recall the budget figure we had in there. I think it was 400. We had $400,000 identified for that project. The cost obviously um, now projected to be $900,000 because we've retained an engineer and uh, we've got an estimate from that engineer. Um, on the plus side, of course, we think we're eligible for a grant for that. But um, we can speak to that now if you want details, but you will be getting a report on January 27th. Could I just ask a follow-up to that? Um, is this potential grant um, a grant that would be, um, it, what's the percentage funding for the grant? Uh, again, it's in the report January 27th. I believe it's 60, up to 60%. Okay. Okay. of 60% uh, of costs for um, multimodal um, transportation. It, it, the okay. grant stream used to be Bike BC, so now um, improvements for pedestrian and cycle um, access, um, so th those portions of that project would be eligible. Okay, thank you. Councillor Solda. And I want to carry on with that, the question the mayor asked, what happens regarding the grant doesn't come in? Um, then we come back to council and we have to change. That's so, correct. If if, um, if if council was to approve this project um, and the expenditures, and if we were not successful in getting the grant, we would come back to council, and um, council could decide if you wanted to continue with that project to uh, minimize or, or, or uh, narrow down the project, make it lesser of a of a project, or narrow the scope is what I'm trying to say, um, or allocate funds from reserves. Like you would have some choices at that point. So could we not do the project also in stages if that? We could ask um, the director of engineering what that would look like to stage a project. You can ask him now, you can ask him on January 27th, or you can ask him when we don't get the grant. We'll let him think. I have no problem waiting till January 27th when we see the whole project. But the, whole, the question too is, are we not putting the cart before the horse type of thing to approve a budget that we haven't seen what has to be improved and, you know, like what? what's going to be in front of us. So I, I'll just say that we're not looking to approve any budget okay. today. Um, this is just the first of our committee of the whole meetings for budget. So um, if it remains in here today unchanged, it doesn't give any approval to it oh. at this point. You're right. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. We'll wait till council meeting. I think there'll be a lot more discussion on this topic for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Poon, did you have any questions? Okay. Councillor Paulson? No. Some of the okay. questions are a little later. Okay. Wonderful. And Councillor Washington? Okay. Okay. Um, my question for this portion is: um, I see the comment that the McLean Mill Dam project um, moved funding from gas tax to operating budget. Is this an increase, <coughs> or just a shift in where the money is coming from? Exactly. It's a shift in where we anticipate drawing the funds from. So, okay. it, um, from if it was an operating, it would be a, a direct impact on taxation this year. Um, we had room in the gas tax reserves to allocate from there. Okay. Again, totally subject to council's decision. Sure. And um, on that topic, um, I believe we had $160,000 or somewhere in that range um, allocated last year. Is this increased funding that's in this year's budget for it? Um, it's increased budget funding in this year's, but it's not increased since the last draft budget you've seen. But I can't recall exactly what the number is there. Okay, I think just because I wasn't aware that, aware that we had um, changed the budget since last year. I know when we put the project to tender, we it um, came in significantly higher, and we opted to not move forward at that time, thinking that we would re-tender right. and get and potentially since, lower bids. Since that time, we've, we've, we're projecting more money from that time. Okay. So if you want to re-tender the same work 
um, I think we'll get similar prices. If you want to return to the same work without budget, uh, the council can direct us to do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, and um, clock tower funding from land sale to gas tax reserve. I know it says no budget impact, but um, has the scope of that project changed or um, has the budget increased? Has money yeah. been added into the budget from for this year? Because I don't think we were aware L of that. Like the, um, like the dam project, um, there's, I believe, $100,000 projected in 2020 that was not budgeted in 2019 for that project. And like the dam project, when we went to tender, we found that we were, our budget was considerably under um, what the actual bids were. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there are no other questions on this portion, I think we can move on. Um, next, we have a report from the CAO, 2020 to 2024, five-year financial plan responses to questions received up to January 13th. Um, so, Council, I know um, some councillors have submitted lists of questions and others have not. Um, there will be more opportunities, but we wanted to um, give staff the opportunity to prepare responses to any questions that were submitted beforehand. Um, and I think the intent is that we'll go through verbally all of those questions so that people can, um, so that people can ask follow-ups if needed. So I will pass this over to the CAO to go through these questions. Madam Mayor, you had asked earlier if, um, if managers in different areas could answer those questions. And um, while I like to speak in council meetings, I'd be tickled if, if uh, managers came up one by one and, and responded to questions from their areas. So, uh, Madam Mayor, would you like to ask the questions and then either I'll answer or, or a different manager will answer? I would love for you to ask the questions wow. and a manager can answer. We'll just hand it right over. Okay, let's try that. So, uh, the first question. And then, and then if we could just make sure we give um, council an opportunity, if, if councillors have questions as we're going through these one by one, um, I think it would be great to ask those questions on the spot and not wait until the end. Okay. First question. Uh, please explain the following account lines in the draft financial plan 2020-2024. Recovery accounts 23951, 23952, 23953. Um, you get the idea. These are recovery accounts. Please explain what they're for. Um, the acting director of finance isn't here, so I'll read her response. Um, that is that the recovery accounts relate to shared services offered within the city, which include uh, gravel administration, purchasing public works administration, and equipment charges for vehicles. Accounting estimates are used to calculate such costs based on an hourly or monthly charge out rates. The expenses seen in the budget are for accounting purposes only and allow us to redistribute the expenses to the correct departments and projects on a monthly basis. Um, and in brackets, we use a standardized costing method that allows us to redistribute costs recovered um, from accounting estimates. Um, and uh, the director's comment is, I have yet to find an easy explanation for this. So I take from that, Madam Mayor, it's an accounting practice. Yeah. Uh, the next question, um, and I'll ask the fire chief to answer this one. Um, what is the impact of the fire underwriter survey rating if the fire truck is not replaced? Uh, so failure to replace the fire engine would result in the city of uh, Port Alberni's uh, public fire protection classification rating through the fire underwriter survey to be downgraded. So currently we're at a three, it would be downgraded definitely to a, a, a four at least. Um, and this almost definitely would result in an increase in insurance rates for commercial, industrial, and multifamily properties. Thank you. Councillor Poon? Uh, how long would it take them to catch on to um, this change in our structure? Well, this is now being streamed by YouTube and is becoming more and more popular. <laughs> so uh, by the I, I really can't answer that question. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the question is, um, you know, how long would it take? So is this something that's reviewed annually? Is there a, is there a trigger for, for um, it to be reviewed? Or is it just, you know, every few years they look at it and at that point we would be downgraded? Yeah, typically we'll request for them to come in periodically. And I'm not sure if a community is identified to no longer be meeting the, the obligations that were in place at the time. <laughs> the fire under survey was last conducted. Um, I, I believe that they have the ability to intervene kind of midway through in between surveys and, uh, and, and downgrade us at that time. 
And right now we're sitting at a 70.35%. Uh, um, the threshold between a class three and a class four is 69.99. So we're holding on to that class three just by a thread. So definitely failure to replace the fire engine would result in a downgrade. Thank you. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the downgrade would also include city property too. So essentially any city owned property would insurance rate would go up too. Correct, yeah. yeah. Any any assets that are covered uh, by insurance, yes. Councillor Solda. So my question is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, do you know what the percentage would be for insurances if we um, did downgrade? I believe that it, it, the, it depends on uh, a, a number of factors. Mm -hmm. So uh, there'd be a different insurance grading for, say, a, a single family homeowner mm -hmm. as it would be for industry. And then depending on the level of industry, a, a major mill as an example, um, they would have, have a, a full suite. And, and when they have their insurance reviewed, it's, it's usually a, a group will come in. I know this is from my, uh, my previous life where annually you'll get audited and, uh, and your insurance rates are then kind of farmed out to a number of different places and they'll apply. Um, so there's not really, I don't have the answer for you. I, I, don't, I can't tell you definitively that for me as a homeowner in town, my insurance will go up by X percent and, and that a, a major industry would go up by Y percent. Um, just I would, I would speculate that it would be significant. So I'm kind of curious to know if other communities have um, downgraded before and have you been involved in that or know of a community? Uh, well, typically communities are always striving to upgrade their, their insurance rating. Mm -hmm. um, I know that, that Campbell River, as an example, has been successful in upgrading their insurance rating. We were successful in upgrading our insurance rating. Um, now, the, the timing between, uh, from what I can gather, the two uh, fire underwriter surveys, the last one was in 2007, and I believe the one previous to that was 1986 or something. So. We had a, a significant amount of time in order to upgrade our, our insurance grading. Um, and of course, the insurance world has changed in between then and now as well. Okay, and one last thing. Yes. The, the fire truck that we're looking at is quite a, a scrutum, a really fancy, fancy, to me, fire mm. truck. It could be perfect for our community. But the thing is, is there something that's under the value that we're getting right now or is is that yeah, the... and I would argue that the, the fire truck that we're getting is, is not particularly fancy. It's, it's functional. Mm -hmm. um, and, and certainly, I guess, well, we might be putting the cart before the horse a bit here. We, we don't even know what the fire truck is that we're getting at this point. Uh, we haven't released an RFP. But okay. essentially, the core of, of what we're looking at getting is exactly what we got um, in, in 2010. Okay. Um, the core of it, meaning you know the horsepower, uh, the transmission, the pumping capacity, um, the seating um, capacity, all these sorts of, of things are, are essentially the same as what we did in 2010. Um, that 2010 truck I, I was looking today um, has 97,000 kilometers that we put on it in the, in the past 10 years. Um, they're workhorses, they, they, and the 97,000 kilometers doesn't really do justice to the work that these, these trucks do. You have to remember that you know, it sat on, on scene at Margaret Street pumping water for eight hours, and those don't clock on the odometer. Um, so these trucks are worked hard, and, and we need something that's reliable. It, it's not a bells and whistles truck, I can assure you of that. It's a, it's a functional truck, and, and unfortunately, as I had given in, in a previous report um, with tariffs and uh, the Canadian dollar uh, change from 2010 till this date and, and all of these things, the cost of buying a fire truck is, is uh, just, it's gone up quite a bit, unfortunately. Councillor Poon. So to go from a, uh, a three to a two, is that kind of what you're thinking? So to go from a three to a two, um, the places that we would need to put the most investment in is staffing. 
So we would need to have quite a bit more staffing than we presently have. Um, it, within the fire editor survey, it shows kind of your room for improvement. That would be uh, one of the key ones. It's not something that I'm asking for right now. I think the cost of extra staffing um, in order to get from a three to a two, um, I, I can't stand here today and argue that that, that funding model makes sense today. Um, but yeah, I would say that right now, we, we certainly don't want to lose a three. Um, a, a two might be a bit ambitious. Councillor Corbeil. Just so I'm clear, uh, this uh, fire engine we're talking about replacing now, it's not the ladder truck, is it not? That's correct, yeah. So at the uh, last um, Committee of the Whole meeting that I was uh, speaking on, uh, we've deferred. So within the fire under the survey, we're able to push the, uh, so it's a 1997, normally the ladder truck would have been replaced in uh, 2017. We applied for and were successful uh, because the ladder doesn't move as much as the engines do um, and it's been well maintained, all of, all of these things. We're able to get a five year extension um, on the ladder. So now the ladder is going to be a 2022 delivery. Uh, this is an engine. Um, so there's a couple trigger points. One is engine one uh, was built in 1991. It's, it's, uh, so it's 29 years old. Uh, the way that the fire under the survey um, replacement schedule works is that um, there's, so from year one to year 15, it can be considered a frontline truck, a first line truck. So it's responding to every time that we get toned out, it's the first truck out of, out of the station. Um, on the year 16 to year 20, um, it can be considered a second line truck. So then it'll respond as a second due engine for if there's a second call at the same time or you have a structure fire, whatever the case may be. Um, and then from year 20 to 29, um, it can be considered a reserve truck. So on very large fires or, um, or on events where, where our primary engines are down, um, then it, it can act as a, as a spare. Essentially, it'll slot into one of those spots. And on its 30th birthday, it received no, no more um, credit for insurance purposes. Um, and so we kind of have two different practices to pick from. Uh, the fire under the survey is already the lesser of the two practices. The other, the best practices uh, I'll say is um, NFPA. NFPA says that you can run it uh, frontline for 15 years and then you can put it into reserve at year 16 and then at year 25 you retire it. So out of the two standards, we've already elected to go to um, I guess the, the lesser but still acceptable standard and, and we wouldn't want to push it any more than that. If I could, is there not a requirement that uh, after 20 years that they're inspected annually by a uh, certified uh, inspector? Yeah, so um, every year actually what we do is we run each one of the engines through a pump test. There's different levels of pump testing that, get, that can take place. So after year 20, um, you go back to doing what's called a certification pump test. So it's a more stringent pump test um, and it's, it's designed to really test it to make sure that, that it's not going to fail. Um, and so that's what we do with, with uh, the engines that are 20 years and older. And we have a certified uh, person in our fire department? Yeah, so you're, you're testing it to a standard. And uh, we currently have a firefighter mechanic who's is capable in doing so, yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, so this truck is 29 years old right now, 1991? Yeah, engine one is 29 years old. Uh, engine four is 20 years old. And engine five is 10 years old. Do we get, um, with our automatic mutual aid agreements, do we get credit um, insurance-wise from the other trucks in the valley? Yeah, so that credit is already factored into that fire under order survey number. Um, and it expressly says within the fire under order survey report that without that automatic aid agreement, we would not be at um, that level three grading. Um, we do get some credit for their apparatus as well. It can make up to uh, a maximum of 33% of, of, uh, of your apparatus allotment, which is already factored into 
this fire and fire. I just wondered more specifically with um, Beaver Creek, I believe, just purchased a new truck or has purchased and is waiting for it to come. If that um, factors into how many trucks we need that are under the allowable age for insurance. Uh, yeah, kind of interestingly enough, so we have a, a 10-year-old truck, and now we're going to have a, a zero-year-old truck. And and the way that the fire under survey is, is it assumes that you're always going to have the vehicles within those time gaps that I had, had just explained. Um, and so it's it's really if you're going to add something on top of that, or if you're going to let something time out like we're, we were just discussing, um, then there's a change which could either bolster your your uh, your number, uh, which in our case wouldn't bring us from a three to a two, but might make us a, a safer uh, three. Um, and uh, or or if you drop something off and you let it lapse, and then we're again at risk. Let's say Beaver Creek decided uh, to not uh, replace an engine, um, that might threaten our fire under or survey. Uh, ranking as well. Okay, thank you. And then my last question: um, It shows in the budget six hundred and nine thousand from IRF, and then one hundred and twenty-eight thousand just says from reserve. I don't know if there's a note at the end here that speaks to where what reserve that is. Um, I think this page is cut off. But do you know where the rest of that money is coming from? The one hundred and twenty-eight thousand. I believe that comes here in uh, within the Q and A, and I believe that CAO is going to speak to it. There is money that's um, sitting in a wildfire reserve, which was um, accrued during the 2018 wildfire season. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions on this question? Seeing none, wonderful. CAO. Madam Mayor, if the Chief's gonna take 20 minutes and every questions, um, I, can, I, can, <laughs> I can order in dinner. <laughs> Uh, Madam Mayor, the Chief has answered the next question, which was, uh, can we keep the present fire truck an additional 10 years and replace it at 30 instead of replacing it at 20 years? And Chief Owens just told us that the truck we're replacing is, in fact, 30 years old. Any questions, further questions on that? No. Uh, the next question, um, if the, again for the Fire Chief, um, if the current self-contained breathing apparatus are not performing as required, why would we want to sell them and who would be interested in purchasing faulty equipment? Um, so uh, I have a report here uh, specifically who would want to buy them and, and uh, why would we want to sell them. Um, so the place that we have spoken with about this and we've also got the uh, within my uh, report for proposed replacement of self-contained breathing apparatus um, also the same place that we looked to purchase um, used equipment that might be on the market. So this place it's it's like a uh, a car dealership for SCBAs, and uh, and you can bring your your beautifully well-tuned uh, Maserati SCBA there, or you can bring your falling apart push pull or drag event SCBA there, and, and they'll they'll take it all. They'll just compensate you differently depending on what they they end up finding with it. Um, so so that's this this business's business is just taking in used SCBAs of, of um, all different qualities and uh, uh, trying to refurbish them and, and then put them back out to, uh, to the market. Thank you. Any questions on that? Yep. Councillor Solda. So I have several questions on it. First, we'll I just can't. The the okay. We do so have I'll a report wait. yet later in the agenda if we want to get more into this okay. topic for sure. Okay, we can move on to the next one. Madam Mayor, the next two, um, Chief can answer as well if he wants to. Uh, was up, I, I, I believe he wants to. Um, first one is, what is $120,000 in wildfire reserves? And I'll, I'll just say, is, although it's not in the answer, um, that's just an operating reserve that was earned from wildfire um, activities. But Chief, do you want to expand on that? Yeah, uh, again, I wasn't here for this, but, um, but my speculation is, is that we wouldn't have anticipated this money to have come in. Um, and so when, when we offered up our services to the province and, uh, and then we subsequently invoiced the province, there was this, this money that had come back and, uh, and it was, I guess, sitting unallocated. Is that the best way to put it, CAO? Yeah, we, we put it in an operating reserve um, for, with, without being allocated. And the next question, if I can move to that same to similar topic, why does the fire department have wildfire reserves if the fire department earns monies um, should those not go to the city of Port Alberni general revenue? 
and the written answer the chief might want to expand on is um, at the time these reserves were generated and received they were held at an operating reserve the use of which would be determined at a later date by council the draft financial plan this draft financial plan indicates that these funds will be used to augment the equipment replacement reserve funds to purchase the new fire engine you just discussed and that decision of course is subject to council's approval are there any follow-up questions on this okay i think that reserve is a great way to subsidize the fire truck purchase without um, using more taxpayer funds sure or direct taxpayer funds <laughs> okay next question uh, why is there a need to replace the 2007 dodge dakota if the vehicle is operating effectively then why does it have to be replaced uh, so the written answer here is uh, during re uh, recent inspection by our maintenance department, there were issues um, with the vehicle that should be repaired. Uh, so we have subsequently got a quote from the local uh, Dodge dealership. It looks like uh, the repairs are going to be about $3,200, $3,300 before actually digging into it and, and getting invoiced. Um, so that's subject to change. Uh, we also requested... Um, what the vehicle was was worth and uh, the local dealership in town here has offered us three thousand uh, dollars for the Dodge Dakota as it as it presently sits um, it's uh, yeah I guess I'll take any questions okay Councilor Corbio uh, first of all is it a four-wheel drive I believe it is a four-wheel drive yes and how many kilometers on it it's sub 100,000, but not far off. Wow. And uh, you earlier said that you have a firefighter mechanic. Is this beyond the scope of a firefighter mechanic to repair what's ever wrong with this thing? Yes, it would be. Uh, it would be more of a, a major overhaul that would need to be done on it. Okay. Okay, thanks. Councillor Solda. So what about the works yard? We have mechanics in the works yard. Would they not be able to do that if the fire mechanic can't do it? Yeah, I think that the, uh, the work might be able to be done by those individuals. Um, now, I, I, would, I would imagine, and maybe I'm speaking out of turn, that uh, the cost would be comparable if, if you take what it costs for the local mechanic to do the work or one of our employees with a fully loaded salary to do the work. I think at the end you're going to be more or less in the same range to do the repairs to it. Um, and at the end of it all, you, you still have uh, a truck that is is nearing the end of its life. I just look at 100k is not very much. I mean, and and that's what surprises me that um, this particular truck goes to the fires or goes on call or how does this tr particular truck work? Can you yeah, explain? To the sure. The, the primary use of this particular truck is uh, it's utilized by the chief fire prevention officer. Um, so that person goes around and does uh, fire inspections. They also do fire in investigations after we have a structure fire. Um, so its primary use is, is kind of as a, uh, as a vehicle that, that's motoring around town. And then uh, on, uh, on occasion, it does respond uh, as an emergency vehicle to uh, uh, typically a structure mm -hmm. fire that we would be well, having. Well, I just look at $45,000 opposed to like three or four thousand dollars to repair a vehicle there's I mean we all have gone through that and I'm just having some little issues on that I know the money's coming out of earth and it's there but still you know I just have some questions on that you know 45,000 we would say 40,000 even if the vehicle costs 5,000 to repair yeah, yeah and I think uh, further down the road once we have our, our asset management software up and, and running um, that'll better inform us kind of that that cost to risk ratio um, certainly we don't want to be getting to a point with emergency vehicles that are owned by the city where we're we're standing on the side of the road with with the hood up um, uh, when we should be attending to a, an emergency but uh, uh, this this vehicle uh, does need some work if we're going to keep it into operation. It's a uh, 13, um, you know, model year 2007s usually come out in 2006. It might be a 14-year-old vehicle. Um, it, I would say that it's it's nearing the end of its reliable life. Um, and I guess I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, Madam Mayor, I have a question for our CEO, if I may. Absolutely. Regarding the policy for our vehicles, when was the last time that was looked at? 
Madam Mayor, I can't recall off the top of my head, but that's a question we'll track and come back at a future that meeting. That would be great. I would like to know. Maybe it's time to take a look at our policies. Absolutely. Thank you. Councillor Pohn. Well, and, and certainly the vehicle that we've been um, test driving in anticipation of potentially replacing is, is an SUV and, and a hybrid SUV. One of the other notes on this particular uh, 2007 Dodge Dakota is, is um, as you might know, the Dodge Dakotas are quite a small uh, vehicle. Um, this very small vehicle is equipped with a, a V8 motor and uh, and uh, is unsuccessful in making it to Victoria and back on a single tank of, of fuel. Um, it's, it's not uh, exactly the most environmentally friendly or, or friendly to the, the daily operation. Um, we've been having some, some frank discussions about uh, does it need to be a pickup truck. I think that we still have a need for um, a pickup truck or, or perhaps more than one pickup truck within the fire department fleet in order to uh, put dirty gear in the back of all that kind of stuff. Um, but we're having a hard look and, and trying, to, um, trying to, to be serious about being more environmentally friendly and, and, uh, and certainly having a hybrid type vehicle or, or an electric type vehicle is, is a, I think, a step in the right direction where we have an ability to do so. Count. Councillor Poon, if you could start turning your mic on. We're having multiple text messages and oh, messages well, about the fact yeah, that your mic isn't on, that. so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Solda. Just one more question on the hybrid. So is our mechanic able to redo repairs on a hybrid? Or do we have to go for more education or take the truck out? Yeah, I would, uh, is, is a great question. I would say that um, the mechanics will have to continue to take more education. And I think it's a... It's a necessary thing. Um, I was going to say necessary evil. It's not a necessary evil. It's a necessary good. Um, in my mind, that if we're going to be going to uh, plug in electrics and, and more green vehicles, then um, our mechanics are going to have to keep up with the times. And at the moment, we don't have a plug in for the electric. We would have to install one, right? Is the... Yes, uh, we would have to install one at the fire hall. Uh, I think we would probably take the lead that has already been established here with. Uh, with bylaw services and some of the vehicles here at City Hall. Mm -hmm. I just have a again a, a thing about the forty five thousand and one hundred and k and just so you know. Sure. And just for clarity, there um, we wouldn't need a plug in for a hybrid. So I, what they're looking at is either a um, pickup truck or potentially a hybrid SUV. You don't need a plug in for a hybrid. They're not proposing a full electric vehicle. And, and on this particular one, it's the same as the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander that that's out here. So it's a plug-in hybrid. We've already had the vehicle on a test drive basis, and, and it comes equipped with a, uh, a trickle charge um, style charger. We found it to be adequate for that specific vehicle. Um, so uh, although we would, we would need something in there, it, it's uh, for this particular vehicle, we've kind of temporarily installed it without much uh, effort. Great, yeah. thank you. Councillor Paulson. Uh, just a comment to make, and I, you know, you, you said that um, this vehicle basically has a $3,000 trade in value. And anytime you're spending three to $5,000 in repairs on a vehicle that's worth $3,000, you're not appreciating the value of that vehicle. It's, it does nothing for the vehicle. So it, it doesn't make sense. Um, and, and in order to get into an SUV, I think it's a, a good policy for, for the city and for the fire department as well. But uh, um, those vehicles are on the road every day and they get used hard and uh, they do have a limited life and uh, this vehicle is planned for replacement through the IRF fund so um, I just think you're spending good money and sending after bad by doing the repairs on, on a $3,000 vehicle. Councillor Washington. Thank you Madam Mayor. I was just getting what Councillor Paulson said. You, you're going to invest $3,000, $3,200 into a $3,000 vehicle. You still got a $3,000 vehicle. And at 2007, if there is any computer chips or anything in that, they're going to be sold that uh, uh, you may end up with less than a $3,000 vehicle. As per the, uh, the hybrids and the plug-ins, um, there's warranty. There's going to be 
way probably at least a five-year warranty on that so we don't have to get our, our guys trained tomorrow but we can work on slowly getting them trained and um, I'm really hoping that uh, the, the hybrids or the plug-ins that we're looking at are hopefully local. Mm -hmm. Has the full 45,000 uh, been contributed to earth for this or is there a shortfall? Um, it's my understanding that it is all contributed. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other? And I, I can tell you that with this, well, and speaking to Councillor Washington's point, um, <laughs> we did get a quote back from the group that we have um, been test driving. They have given us some attractive pricing, but I don't think that it's uh, so attractive that a motivated uh, dealer within town couldn't compete with it. Um, and, and so my suggestion would be that, that uh, if approved, we would, uh, we would offer it out for all, uh, uh, yeah, out for tender for people to bid on. Thank you. Councillor Washington. Thank you. I'm just thinking for the warranty work, like they are, they are sure. pretty special. And if you don't have the laptop and the right plugs to plug in the, for the car to tell you what's wrong with it, uh, I'd much rather see it mm -hmm. be done locally rather than having to drive to somewhere else to get it looked at. Absolutely. Um, and last question for me, and we might not be able to get this answer right now, but last year we bought a hybrid SUV, um, I believe, for Public Works, and our budget for that was $35,000. i am just wondering if um, that vehicle has been purchased and if we did purchase it within that budget, um, and if so, if there's a need for this one to be more expensive than that. And if you don't have that information right now, that's fine. My recollection, Madam Mayor, was the budget was 38, and it did come in on budget. Right. Again, that was a Toyota RAV4, yep. um, not a plug-in, so just a straight gas electric hybrid. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on this? Okay. Wonderful. Next question. Madam Mayor, another question for the Fire Chief. Um, in the budget, there is a replace home natural hydraulic tools in the amount of $55,000. What is this? It does not seem to be included in the PowerPoint presentation under key proposed capital projects. Yeah, and so to answer the question, uh, Hamatro is a, uh, is a specific brand. Um, so I put them as a generic auto X equipment within the presentation. Um, so it is there, it is earthed, um, and uh, it is within the current uh, capital budget uh, proposal. It doesn't show it's coming from Earth, though. It shows it's coming from General. So oh, there, is there money in Earth for it? There should be. I don't know if it's all there. We can we can check you that can out of there and come back. Thanks. Any other questions on this, Councillor Corbiel? <clears throat> so is this what's called the Jaws of Life? Yeah. So Jaws of Life. So Homatro is one company. Uh, Jaws of Life was a trademark by a, a, another company, but yes, it's, it's the same thing. So you've got something in place today. Does that not work anymore? So the plan is, is um, uh, hopefully with the approval of the new engine, we're going to depart from a practice that we've been doing to date, which is we've had um, engine five as our primary response engine. We've had engine four, which is a four wheel drive um, engine. And typically till to date, we've responded to motor vehicle accidents with engine four and uh, everything else with engine five, um, except for medical response. And so, um, so the plan is, is that when we get the new engine, we'll put um, e-tools on it. Uh, currently we use a, 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 a gas powered uh, hydraulic pump um, and we will keep the hydraulic pump and those hydraulic tools on engine four, which will then become our reserve engine. Um, so in the event that either the new engine is out of service or um, there's a situation where uh, we're going out to, to Bamfield or it's uh, heavy snow conditions and we require a four wheel drive, then we'll send engine four with its current complement, which is uh, I would say at, at the end of its lifespan, but we'll, we'll be able to, to continue to limp it along um, in that capacity because it won't be going out as our primary set of auto extrication tools. Okay. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Chief, so the new tooling, will it plug into the existing? Will everything be interchangeable or are we going to start all over again? 
it actually um, it won't plug into anything so it will be battery operated the battery technology has come so far now um, that uh, literally we'll plug it into shore power it'll recharge the batteries uh, which will give us a lot more flexibility it's it's greener um, and also the change in policy or, or uh, the way that we uh, go about doing business and having those primary tools on our primary engines will prevent us from our current practice which is uh, we'll be out with engine five um, across town and get a, a motor vehicle incident and we have to return back to the station in order to swap out vehicles to go to the to the incident so okay okay next question I think that's it for I me think right the, now. the fire chief is yeah. done for a while don't go far though, thank eh? you yeah, don't go very far away. <laughs> Madam Mayor, the next two questions, I'd like to read the questions and the answers, and then if there's follow-up questions, either myself or the manager of community safety can um, respond to those. Um, first of those two, breakdown of the $261,061 from the 2020 community policing, and so break that down, and what, if any, could be allocated from the police um, surplus fund? And the response is that this budget includes salary and benefits for the community policing officer, approximately $25,000 for community policing costs, and $150,000 for the annual lease and associated costs for a new community safety building. All of these expenses are currently earmarked in this current draft plan to be drawn from Policing Reserve Fund. And the next question is $150,000 for community safety building renovation comes from what reserve fund? And again, that is earmarked to come from the Policing Reserve Fund. Okay, are there any follow-up questions? <coughs> okay, thank you. Next question. Uh, does the deletion of the Arrowview demolition cost, $650,000, change the overall budget increase? So the written response, um, first of all, the answer is no. Um, the, uh, the written response is, if the Arrowview demolition continues to completion, then the $650,000 earmarked for the city to do that work will remain in the land sale reserve fund. At this point in time, it is recommended that the allocation of those funds remain in the budget pending the outcome of the current demolition efforts by the owner. Are there any questions on that? Okay. Thank you. Next question. Under clock tower, there's $100,000 from land sale. What does this mean? Um, a request for tenders was issued in 2019 for the clock tower project. The price quotation for the sole bid received was approximately $100,000 higher than budget. That should read. I wonder if um, the clock tower project, we could get um, maybe an update report, even if it's just brief on, because it's we haven't heard about this project in quite a while, and I think we all were aware that it was stalled due to budget. Um, but I don't think uh, I think the original budget was a hundred thousand dollars. So, um, is it two hundred thousand now? I believe it was first budget was a hundred thousand. That's correct. So it would be two hundred now. So um, it, that's a surprise to me, and I think we should probably. Um, hear an update on this project sure. and, and just determine if we want to continue with the same scope or potentially change before we allocate funds to it. Um, I think Councillor Washington, did you have a question? No, okay, Councillor Solda. Madam Mayor, before my time with um, regarding the clock tower, was there any talk about or discussion about a different type of design where it wouldn't be so much um, in the past? CAO. Um, so. Madam Mayor, first of all, we can bring you that report. Second of all, um, the project was a refurbishing of the current clock yes. tower, not a demolition and redesign. Um, mm -hmm. Where we got into um, unforeseen expense was um, when we found lead paint, lead-based paint there. Okay. So the um, the level of, of in intervention, I guess, to to take all of the paint off and capture all that paint and do it in a way that's safe is um, they would have they'll, they'll have to shroud the whole structure. So that's what drove the cost beyond the, the scope of budget. Okay, thank you. Councillor Corbiel, did you have a question? No. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that a report on that project, um, you know, doesn't have to be urgently, but would be helpful before we move forward, because I don't think um, that Council's even seen the design for this project at any okay. point, so um, I think it would be good to have an update on it. Okay. Okay. Next question. In the 2021 Key to Key trail system, uh, need to identify grants. Um, Will, do you want to have a go at that one? <coughs> uh, 
uh, Madam Mayor, the, the answer here might be slightly misleading. The BC Active Transportation Infrastructure Grant, uh, the early 2020 um, intake is, uh, I think, early February is the deadline. And that early February deadline, we're actually shooting for the Third Avenue pro project. So don't know timing on a second intake at this time, but that would be one grant or any others that might be out there that we would hope to get for the for the key to key project. So Great. yeah, stay tuned on the, on where that grant is going. Okay, thank you. Um, a follow up on that. When um, I met with Minister Fraser, his um, they asked for a summary of that project so that they could help us source grants. Um, and I'm wondering if we've provided that to them yet and if yeah. We did provide that. Okay, great. So hopefully they'll be able to find us some potential other grant sources as well. Any other questions on this one? Okay, thank you. Next question. Um, and I, I know Ken Rutherford from the Industrial Heritage Society is in the room. If Ken wants to respond to these, um, he's more than welcome to. I'll, I'll read the question and then see if Ken wants to stand up. If not, I'll read the answer. Um, under rail service, the Santa train is an annual event. If you plan to, if you plan to do this, where does it show in your revenues? And there's Ken. Ready to stand up and answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, the Santa train typically, when we've run it for all the years, was a revenue source for the society. Uh, we offer the service to run the train for the community, but we don't take any revenue from the whole project for the whole year. So the Santa train has always been a source of revenue for us to carry on with the projects that we do. We don't uh, have many revenue sources. So that's what that's what. Okay. So we, we would still like to do that, um, but um, have it as a, 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 basically the community thanking us for the job we've done by having that revenue, so. Okay, okay. and so that's um, anticipated to continue with that model yep. if we add rail to our budget for this year. Correct. Any questions? Okay, see you. Next question, on, again under rail service. What fundraiser, what fundraiser activities have you held during the past year and what fundraiser activities will you hold in 2020? Ken, do you want me to read that answer or do you want to read it? Um, you, can have, you can read it and I'll just answer any Perfect. questions. Perfect, okay. Have. So the, the written response is in 2019, the fundraising that um, IHS, Industrial Heritage Society, um, did with regards to the railroad, railroad was to canvas for some donation funds toward the rebuild of the city-owned number seven locomotive. That was $20,000 they received. And a GoFundMe um, to help with the repairs to the vandalized coaches, $3,500, uh, owned by the society. Some donations, over $15,000, were also received for the rebuild of the XCNR caboose, which is owned by the society. A $5,000 donation from an estate for train work has also been received. All other fundraising was done to support work for the collections at the Industrial Heritage Center. Fundraising with the, uh, with the budget for the operation of the railroad will be the responsibility of the Alberta Pacific Railway Manager and will be separate from the accounts of the Industrial Heritage Society. In developing the budget, there were no new identified fundraising plans other than a commitment and hopefully the revenue generated would be more than budgeted. Okay, are there any follow-up questions? Okay. Thank you. Madam Mayor, the, um, the next question um, I'll ask Jeff Pellick to respond to. Uh, the question is, TELUS has high-speed fiber optic internet in Port Alberni, question mark. Without understanding this technology, why does the city want to install its own fiber optic cable? Can the city lease the fiber from TELUS? I'll need you to pull it over so I can read, <laughs> Davina. Mm -hmm. I wrote pretty much all that out, but I can't remember it. Okay, so the wording that's there, uh, investing in city-owned fiber optic cable will provide better and more affordable service over the life of that infrastructure. Uh, we can certainly lease fiber from Bell or Shaw. Uh, we have been able to do that for some years now. As an example, the city currently has an agreement with a reseller of teleservices services for managed fiber connectivity between the city works yard and the Bainbridge pump house station. Uh, so we actually just signed that agreement last year after um, quite a long time of having a lack of connectivity to that station. And with the multi-million dollar upgrade that station got and the concerns over the water treatment and so on, we decided that it was vital to, to get that connection. And so we had to go out and get a managed fiber connection. So uh, going to the next paragraph, there's a cost with that. It, it is costly to lease. 
So as an example, the monthly fee of the one gigabit per second fiber connectivity between the works yard and the Bainbridge water treatment plant is about $3,500 per month or 42,000 annually. If we were to lease third party fiber to connect our five main staffed facilities, that would potentially cost us leasing about $210,000 per year. And that speed would be capped. That would be at the one gigabit per second fiber speed. So the future speeds of 10 gigabits per second or 40 to 100 gigabits per second would cost quite a bit more. Uh, the network bandwidth speed, I threw those speeds into there because it's actually important to proper connectivity uh, of our programs and our staff. As the technology becomes faster, quicker, more dependent upon a network pipe, uh, it's important to have that. So I threw in the example of home internet. So most of us are familiar with our home internet, what we're paying for, what we're getting. Uh, we're getting nowadays home internet that we couldn't even possibly dream of five years ago. And it's because of the advent and the inclusion of the 4K streaming. And then now it's gonna be the 8K streaming coming out in another couple of years and video games and everybody's doing this inside their house, right? So you expand that into actual enterprise services and it's just an illustration to show how that, uh, that network speed is important. Now regarding TELUS specifically, we can't lease from TELUS. We've never been able to, they're not interested in that. That previous example that I used between the City of Workshire and the Bainbridge Pump House is going through a third party reseller of TELUS services. So TELUS has always preferred to use their own infrastructure for their own purposes. <coughs> and uh, I've actually tried several times when the pure fiber came in and got installed, they won't share. Other companies are willing uh, Shaw, Bell, and, and others, but not tell us. So I, I put that in there specifically. So happy to answer any questions that come out of that. I'm not sure if anyone understood that. <laughs> <laughs> Just Thank you. Really, really, really fast. That's right. Okay. Um, Councillor Solda. Uh, thank you. Um, regarding the fiber, what is the cost? Do we have a rough estimate what it would cost us to have our own? Yes, we do. There, there is a report that is forthcoming, and I've, I've oh, actually okay. I've been dusting it off over the years. I first made it up a few years back, um, but I haven't wanted to hand it in e immediately yet because I'm pursuing the CRTC uh, regulations that I had previously talked about when I was last up here talking about fiber. Okay. So that slows things down a little bit because that's the feds, so right? I'll wait CRTC. Okay, so I'll wait for the report, but I do, to add to that question is that we can, if we had our own, we could lease space to, or however that you want to call it, to the ACRD, to other um, businesses too, and that would bring in money. I, because I'm looking at, if you're looking at $42,000 annually, and then there's other costs, like if we went the 210, if we did lease, where would the savings be five, ten yeah. years from now? You know, I always look yeah. at a, the picture and then it's gravy after that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, when we were going through this, the CAO asked me, well, what about that, the, the link to get us from here to the fire hall uh, to get us through the dip? And it was going to be about the same distance and same price. Well, not distance, but same price as um, the work chart to Bainbridge. It's the same pipe. You, they're not charging us per kilometer. It's the endpoint and the lease that they charge us for. So it's still going to be about forty-two thousand dollars to lease between uh, City Hall and the Fire Hall if we wanted to do that. Um, so when it comes to installing our own, yeah, absolutely, we we have an idea. Um, the cost estimates that I had from a couple years ago, I was talking with uh, someone just last week, and he said those cost estimates are still valid. That. Uh, I think I provided them to you, that's $70 per meter per pole and $300 per meter for in-ground. Mm -hmm. That's still the rough order of magnitude pricing. Mm -hmm. um, but that CRTC um, regulations that I'm pursuing right now uh, could give us a, a price discount. And so that's what I'm waiting for to provide pricing back to you is more information coming back to me. Okay, thank you. I guess what I'm missing on this is um, why would we um, like like why would we ever 
um, look at potentially connecting these locations for two and pay two hundred and ten thousand a year. So are we looking to just have significantly better service? Um, do we think that this would be more reliable in a disaster? Um, I guess I don't understand as a very basic level why we would even need to look at expending this cost potentially. Yeah, so um, a lot of this information is in the report that's forthcoming, but I also talked about this in a nutshell uh, during our, our preliminary report. Um, the two questions that you asked, are there benefits? Yes and yes. Um, it's better speeds than what we currently have and it's, it's better reliability, absolutely better reliability. So the way that we have our facilities connected right now, our primary connection is wireless point-to-point -point radio. So we have towers, right? Um, but those towers are severely impacted by wind, by rain, and by the growth of trees, the nonstop growth of trees. Um, I can't go and cut a tree down. I mean, I, I can technically, but I would be in you big trouble by cannot. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> cannot. See, I just was told. Um, so it's been a problem for years. Um, so what we've had to do is to lease um, business class internet, the fastest that is available from Shaw and then now from TELUS, they've got their pure fiber business internet, but it's still nowhere near the speed of fiber. And we're still paying, we're basically renting that from them, right? So what we've got in the works right now is okay, but we're still paying Shaw and tell us a lot of money for those internet speeds because our wireless point to port radios aren't cutting it anymore. They just aren't. So to do something to actually improve the infrastructure of the facilities for the city, the future has to be fiber. There's no way of getting around it. Other communities saw this coming decades ago and they planned for it and they put it in. I don't know why Port Alberni didn't decades ago. Um, and you know, we haven't undertaken a huge effort tearing up our main roadways and being able to work on them for a very long, long time. Maybe that's why. I've been trying to get the engineers whenever a road is torn up to, to put a conduit in, but we're not doing that. And that's probably because of the lack of money coming in over the decades, right? But it is something that we are definitely behind on. Other municipalities are far, far ahead of us on this. Great. Thank you. Councillor Corbiel. Just for clarity, I guess decades ago uh, we didn't have cell phones, never mind optic cable. What exactly are we doing? Are we just communicating with somebody out there or are we able to alter water flow? Explain to me what exactly this gives us that uh, we don't have now or didn't have five or even ten years ago. Um, yeah, so fiber optic internet is, is it's, it's a cable, but it's glass inside. That's what it's actually made of. So it carries signals at basically light speeds. So that's what gives it the advantage in speeds over connectivity cables such as coaxial <coughs> or even wireless going through the air or ethernet or anything like that. So it's still a solid cable. Uh, it's very, very susceptible to bends. It's glass on the inside. Um, it's just, the, they've been actually making fiber optic cable for decades actually at, in Saskatchewan where I come from. So that's why I referenced decades, maybe not here in BC, but we had it back there a long time ago. Um, the advantage in the fiber, it's, it's a connectivity cable. It's pure and simple what it is. So it's not meant to give you building controls specifically, but it's meant to allow you to communicate with your control systems in a more efficient manner. Um, so I'll, I'll go back to the example of the works yard and, and our water treatment plant at Bainbridge. So previously with the really, really spotty bad internet that they had there, they weren't able to communicate with that facility without going on site. They just did it. But then you realize over time that that on-site travel back and forth is incredibly inefficient and there's so many other things that you could be taking care of instead of that half hour drive out and a half hour drive back or whatever long it takes you in whatever truck you're driving, right? Especially in the weather. Uh, depending upon what weather is, you know, some of the vehicles, our city van can't even get out there 
uh, depending upon the snowfall. So when we put in the managed uh, fiber to put in there, they're now able to communicate remotely, but stably. So they don't have to go on site for every single alarm. So they've got HVAC controls, they've got water controls. Yeah, they're all there, they're all in place. But now that they've got that solid, reliable, fast internet, they can pop open a laptop, check an alarm, what's going on there, turn it off, adjust this, divert this, whatever is needed. In addition to that, with the water treatment plant, uh, because of the extra security regulations that are coming down from the federal and from the provincial sections, um, security cameras are becoming more and more of a regular thing to see at a water treatment facility or any pump house. Um, and so with that facility, we wanted to be able to see what's going on. Is a door ajar? Is somebody parked there? Is, you know, what possible damage is going on? I mean, literally, this is, this is our drinking water, right? This is vital. And so we were not able to give a solid security camera shot out to Bainbridge with the spotty internet. But now with the fast internet, with the fiber, you can bring up all the cameras, you can view it in live. You're not just viewing every five, 10 second intervals as they used to. So it's a lot more reliable to be able to do that remotely. So when it comes to our, our, our city facilities that we have, we're able to do everything that I just described the way that we've got because of the wireless radios and the TELUS internet that we're already making use of. But that use is capped. That's as much as we can currently do. That's it. To go into the future, to go the very next step up, the only step up is fiber. I think um, given that we have a report coming forward on this, um, I think it's going to take a lot more conversation for sure for everyone to get um, a proper understanding and understand the need. But I think unless there's more budget related um, questions, we will move on from this one for now. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. See you. Hi, Madam Mayor. The next three questions I'll ask uh, Willa Thorpe to respond to. Um, first of those, Willa, expl explanation please of the huge increase in the gyro youth centre maintenance budget in 2020. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. This huge increase reflects wages and benefits uh, for the newly created facility maintenance technician position. So the increase is mostly offset by a reduction in the museum budget as a result of not filling the museum manager position. Thank you. Are there any follow-up questions on that? <laughs> None? Wonderful. Next. Madam Mayor, the next question. Um, in 2020, the operating capital projects, uh, parks and recreation facilities upgrades show, um, show up twice, $250,000. And before Ms. Thorpe responds, I'll tell you that um, the document we gave you before had a misleading header that I think uh, wherever this question came from, it, somebody might have been looking at 2021 and saw the header of 2020, but uh, Willow might have a better response to that. Yeah, so Madam Mayor, we're very excited to move forward on projects such as this. However, there should be no such entry in the 2020 budget. We have uh, articulated or, or started in the 2021 budget. Uh, we've looked to indicate uh, $250,000 each year in facility upgrades. So what that means is that uh, we'd earmark a specific facility each year um, and what those uh, upgrades might include. So similar to where you see in Recreation Park in the, the Gyro Youth Centre has had significant upgrades over the past uh, year or two, we'd look to offer that same upgrade to the other facilities as well. So that would be in areas such as equipment, furnitures, fixtures from an aesthetic standpoint, from an efficiency standpoint, as well as from an ergonomic standpoint. Thank you. Are there questions on that? Okay. Thank you. The next question, Madam Mayor, regarding um, leisure programs. Um, the question is, our youth services and programs account 27170 appears to be so much less than our other programs. Is this market group underfunded and is there a way to expand these programs? So Madam Mayor, in alignment with strategic plan priority number three, uh, which is both the best use of city owned assets and not duplicating services, we're in the process of reviewing what programming we offer as well as developing partnerships with organizations to maximize youth participation. Uh, and keeping in mind as well that updating programming and developing partnerships will also have a positive impact on strategic plan strategies 5.1.2 and 5.2.2. That's great. Thank you. Are there questions on this? Okay. Thanks, Willa. 
Thank you. Uh, Mayor, our, our, our other WT, Wolf Takama, will uh, respond to the next <laughs> questions. Uh, CAO, before that, yeah. um, can I just ask, yeah. um, just on the, the $250,000, not specific to that, but mm -hmm. for quite a long time we've been talking about our, you know, our um, uh, asset management system. I think we got a grant to implement <clears throat> quite a few years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Are we closer to having an asset management plan for our for buildings and roads and everything else? Um, just generally, because seeing you know 250,000 facility upgrades per year, um, I would imagine sure. that is going to help with asset management over time for yeah, sure. Acting, but acting director of finance can respond to that. Right wonderful. Now. Yeah. Madam Mayor, um, I'm actually preparing a report for uh, your next council meeting uh, on where we're kind of at on our roadmap for our asset management plan. Um, so um, right now we're just in the uh, stages of um, procuring a asset management software. Uh, and then we are going to start uh, dumping all of our information into that okay. um, and hopefully fill in some gaps for you guys along the way. So okay. um, great timing. We're, yeah, we're looking at um, having everything implemented probably by 2021, having it all streamlined and giving you some solid information. Perfect. Thank you. Are there any questions on that, Council? Okay. Thank you. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Rosa. Uh, Madam Mayor, the next question um, is the four million six hundred eighty-nine thousand seven hundred ninety dollars um, the last of the cost for the sewer lagoon? <laughs> Madam Mayor, the that report says that a report is coming at the 27th and that's true <laughs> we're gonna have um, a really long agenda on the 27th i'm feeling <laughs> um however the the 4.6 million that is in the draft capital plan is actually there's another amount in the draft capital plan under the sewer reserve so there's two amounts we're talking about borrowing as well as using um, reserve money to complete that project so those de details will come uh, <coughs> next week and just as a, I, I know we'll, we'll get more details next week, but um, are all of the borrowing costs for the funds we need, whatever that amount is, um, to finish the sewage lagoon project, are those already accounted for in the draft budget? Madam Mayor, um, so not all of the funding as per our recent uh, report that will be released um, is in the budget. Um, so we'll be looking at adding that into the budget if it's approved. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Next question, Madam Mayor. In the 2021 replacement of a eight-year-old Flusher VAC truck, is this normal? So easy answer, yes. Um, at the time of purchase, <clears throat> just to explain a bit about the, the earth process. So at the time of purchase, an anticipated service life is determined for each vehicle. Contributions to earth are made uh, based in part on that anticipated service life. Um, all vehicle replacements are reviewed in the year and, and probably should say the years prior to scheduled replacement because uh, a vehicle may not last as long as it was anticipated. Um, in many cases, replacements are postponed, and I think you'll see that on a, on a future um, question. Um, so it, in, a, in effect, moved forward in the schedule. So if it's determined that a vehicle has reliable service life, or maybe we had a, a large expenditure um, just before, I think that's happened you know, with a transmission or, or whatever on some of the larger vehicles. Um, so this flusher truck uh, will be assessed this year. And again, in conjunction with all other um, proposed vehicle purchases and a decision will be made during the budget process next year. So yeah, at this point it's still in the 2021 uh, budget, but yeah, every vehicle is, is looked at prior to the year that it actually is in the budget. Okay, thank you. Any questions? None? Okay, next question. Madam Mayor, a uh, similar question. In 2024, replacing three six-year-old garbage trucks, is this normal? So, similar question, similar answer. Um, and we do actually have an, act, an extra truck in the, in the fleet, so we're rotating the three trucks on, on the, we use two a day, rotating the third truck in. Um, probably those vehicles will go eight years. Um, again, you know, when you're, when you're putting money into earth um, over the, over the life of those vehicles, you got to pick a number. So, 
again, hopefully those vehicles, so far they've been really good. Um, yeah, huge improvement over the problems we had with the old ones. So, um, yeah, we'll see that in, in a few years. Okay. Okay. Next question, Capital Projects 2020, replacement of number 721. It's a 2007 Dodge Caliber. There is no dollar value attached to this. Is there a need to replace it? Yeah, and I'm not sure if the uh, previous director of finance may have left that in there just to show where it was in the original or schedule. Um, yeah, no budget. The, the line is there. It, it can come out, it, it, in my opinion. Um, so let's move forward to 2022, and you'll see that that's where the actual money for replacement is, is put. So. Okay. Madam Mayor, it might be that the same uh, document um, header error has mis was misleading to that question. So it was, it, was not, it was not meant to be in 2020, but I think the header might have read 2020. Okay. Next question. In 2021, General Capital, $400,000 for water meter replacement. Yeah, so we from 2020, or sorry, from 2017 on, we had uh, spread out the capital investment on replacing our water meters over six years. Um, that'll likely be spread out over more years because I know last year we bought uh, near the end of 2018. We spent a lot of money and bought a whole bunch, and we're still actually implementing those. So we didn't buy another $400,000 worth in, in 2019. And, and my suggestion is we'll, we'll use that this year to keep moving forward. Um, we're, we're dealing with them as they fail anyway. Um, so it's not like that program has to happen exactly from 2017 to 2022. Councillor Solda. Um, so the water meters, do they come out of the uh, the water fund? Because that's why one of the reasons we set that up in the past. So we're, where's believe, the money coming I from? So. I, I think they know. do. Maybe Rosa can help me there. But uh, in the water. How much do chain? one of those little water meters cost? Just out of curiosity. Water operating. It depends on the size of them. Oh, okay. Because there's from the... You know, the, the residential ones to, to industrial ones are they're quite a bit different. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So we're just anyway, it was in water operating is where... where it's coming out of the water? water. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next question about snow and ice removal. What happens to the projected expense if there's no s snow removal required during the winter, during the year? So <laughs> pretty easy answer on that is unspent funds are recorded as general surplus in the following year's budget. So not used, they, they get carried forward, correct? Yeah. Okay, any questions on that? Okay. Last question on the replacement of a 2007 Ford Ranger pickup, number 171, and replacement of a 2007 John Deere backhoe, number 302. Are these operating effectively? If yes, why do they have to be replaced? So the mechanical superintendent uh, discussed these specifically with them, um, and that's thus the notes that I've made. Um, Unit 171 has transmission and what are the other issues there. Let's slide that over, and and other engine issues uh, will be costly if we have to try to maintain that in the fleet. Um, it's a small truck, it's not very efficient for operational tasks. We've, we've had a number of them that we've replaced. Um, 302 is a backhoe. Again, it's. Uh, he says being just being patched together at this point. So I strongly recommend that both units be left in, in the 2020 budget for replacement. Okay. All right. Madam Mayor, that was not the last question. I apologize. No, I, I, was, I thought you were maybe. <laughs> Next question uh, for Mr. You. Deacon. Thanks, Wolf. Uh, why did the Economic Development Department budget increase um, from 751,525 in 2019 to 902,604 in 2020. Please provide a breakdown of that budget. So, uh, Council, uh, the annual budget, the one that you uh, issue a tax requisition for for economic development is approximately 400,000. Uh, where the budget changes is where we've been successful in securing grants for uh, different projects. So uh, in 2019, uh, we secured uh, an additional $398,000 in grant funds. 
and the bullet points go down to explain what those projects were, uh, where we, uh, how much uh, money we secured for the projects and where they came from. And uh, in 2020, uh, so far we're showing an additional 500,000, all of which will come from uh, the province for the food innovation and processing hub. And I fully expect that uh, through the year we'll see other grant opportunities. Uh, and if they're in alignment with uh, council's strategic plan, we'll pursue those and it will add to the budget. Great. Are there any questions on any of those initiatives? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I think that was the last question. Looks like. Okay. okay. Madam Mayor, um, if there are more questions from council, um, please send them to us and we'll respond in a similar manner. I think it's helpful to have a, a, a thoughtful uh, response and a written response as well. I also want to point out that some of the questions um, that councillors submitted also included some, some comments, and so we did not include comments in this document. And um, if we haven't responded back to those councillors, um, you know, please feel free to bring those comments to these meetings. Mm -hmm. But we didn't think there was a, unless you want us to also track the comments provided in a written manner. I think how you've presented it um, works really well. Thanks. To get the information forward. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is the report from the fire chief for proposed replacement of the self-contained breathing apparatus. I would imagine we have questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if you want to just quick briefly summarize. Um, I know we all heard, but just for any members of the public, um, just generally the issues that have been had um, and why this is coming forward. Uh, sure. So, um, as discussed in the last committee of the whole, um, we've been having a number of issues over an extended period of time with the self-contained breathing apparatus. Um, we've done, in our view, everything that we can in order to make these as serviceable as possible. Um, kind of constant communication with the manufacturer, with the supplier that we had, um, etc. And we still uh, continue to have these issues. So in this discussion, uh, we've kind of illustrated what the two critical requirements of these SCBA are. Uh, number one, that they be fully functional, meaning that they don't fail. And number two, that the firefighters have confidence that they don't fail. And uh, I would say that we're not, uh, we're not fulfilling either of those. Um, so there's a long list, list in the appendix. Um, of issues that we have had. We also had a, uh, an SCBA that was worn by one of our captains um, since this report was penned. Um, and in that, it was, a, it was a training exercise, but the, uh, the captain was utilizing the pack. Um, it's supposed to go into a low air alarm um, at 25%. Um, we were less than 12% than um, when the person looked down and, and noted that the audible bell again wasn't ringing and, and, uh, and should have been. So um, a situation that had a very low con uh, consequence because we were uh, in training, but if that individual was, was inside of a structure fire, could potentially have quite a, a great consequence. Uh, we sent that SCBA off to the manufacturer again. The uh, manufacturer um, sent it back said they couldn't replicate it and sent us a bill for, um, for, for them checking over the SCBA. Um, so uh, that's kind of the, the uh, kind of just a, a continuation of, of the uh, issues that we've been having. Um, and then I've, uh, I've put down in the report here kind of what the options are. So one is uh, maintaining the status quo. Uh, we're certainly, uh, again, with the, the packs that we have and, and uh, uh, the support um, for good and bad that we have from the manufacturer and um, we're, we're doing everything that we can. So we can continue to do that. Um, we can purchase refurbished SCBAs uh, from again that same kind of the analogy I used earlier about the, the car dealer. Uh, we might be buying somebody else's issue in that case that has been 
quote unquote refurbished. Um, and you can see the, the price tag that would be affiliated with that. Um, I've noted this down as 101,875 uh, and 43 cents, which is our quoted amount with a 10% contingency. Um, and then the third option would be to um, replace the SCBAs early. And uh, you can see the amount here is uh, the 180,000 uh, plus the 10% uh, contingency there, which brings us up to 198,000. Thank you. Are there questions from council? Councillor Solda. So the existing um, breathing apparatus that we have now, do other communities use them? Do you know? Yes, they would. And do they have the same kind of problems that we have? Do you know? Um, and why would they keep using that if they, we have such big issues here? We have heard uh, kind of through the, the grapevine that um, there are places that have had freezing issues. Uh, we haven't heard the issues with the, uh, the low air alarm not, not functioning. Um, I think part of this is, is, is that uh, uh, everybody likes to tread, as we should as well, carefully so that um, we don't find ourselves in a, in a legal issue with the, the manufacturer. Um, and so lots of times people have the issue and either they strive to remedy it or, or not and, uh, and you just don't hear about it. So. so basically it's a manufacturer problem maybe and not our issue type of thing? Um, and again, I'm trying to choose my words carefully okay. so that we don't find ourselves in a legal situation. Sure. Um, we, we have done everything that we possibly can uh, through uh, maintenance, uh, overhauling these units, um, training, follow-up training, um, and, and we've continued to experience issues with these SCBAs. Okay, so for a new system, the new system, the SCABA, I guess that's what you call it. Um, what is the warranty on these? And, and we wouldn't have similar problems. And, and what does WorkSafe BC say about this? Have we been in touch with them or do they make comments? Uh, we did engage WorkSafe BC when we had um, kind of our marquee issue, which was on the Margaret Street fire in March of last year. Um, we engaged WorkSafe um, because of the seriousness, uh, the serious potential consequences that could have arose from that um, and it was the right thing to do. Uh, they didn't invest any lab time into it so they uh, again relied on the manufacturer. We asked the manufacturer for a report on what they've found. They've given us a verbal report that they were unable to replicate um, what had occurred um, and that was kind of where that that ended. Uh, WorkSafe BC um, uh, we agreed with WorkSafe PC that we would um, refurbish all the units. We did do so. We have since had more issues with the SCBAs after, um, after doing that. And we've uh, engaged in additional training and, again, uh, still had issues. So. Okay. Madam Mayor, I have just two more questions regarding this. Um, how many suppressions are you looking at purchasing? Uh, we're, we're looking at doing like for like, and, and sorry, I, I did neglect to answer one of the questions, okay. which was a warranty question. Yes. Um, it just so happens that the, the timing is as such that the SCBAs that uh, we're seeking to uh, purchase with this 198,000, um, that manufacturer has just come out with a for as long as you own it warranty. Uh, which is uh, a, a new uh, offering which has never been offered before. Um, so what they're saying is, is as long as you own these SCBAs, uh, they will continue to support them and, and warranty them, uh, which is pretty extraordinary. That's like not to that. say that we won't eventually have to replace them, um, but, uh, but, but our, uh, our confidence is, is bolstered by that. Okay. Could, and sorry, if I could just add, um, if I could just add, uh, follow up to that, um, yes. is this um, the company? Um, obviously, this is a well-known company. Is this the company that we had prior for the last set of packs that we had? So it's a company that we're comfortable will be around, of course, to um, yes. work with us on that warranty. 
Yeah, it is the same company that we were with before, and it's the same company that uh, all of our mutual aid partners are currently using, as well as our public works. Great, thank you. Okay, okay go ahead. And so, um, how many are we looking at purchasing? Uh, we would be looking at purchasing the exact same complement that we currently have, so we would just trade like for like. 28? I believe it's 28, yeah. And firefighters, we have 22, don't we? How many firefighters? Yeah, so we have uh, 20 in suppression and uh, chief fire prevention officer and two okay. So if we have, so why so many if we have 20? I know you want a backup, but why, if you have 20 in suppression, that would make eight spare, right? Yeah, so um, the individuals don't have the SCBA kind of sitting with their gear. The SCBAs are mounted in, in the apparatus. Um, so that that allows for the complement of the SCBAs in each of the apparatus and then four spares, which with the, uh, the current model that we have, we've been using all four of those spares pretty consistently. Uh, our hope, of course, is, uh, is that we, we won't be in the future, but that's pretty uh, uh, standard to have a, a complement of, of spare units in case you have a, an issue. Okay, and a question to the CAO. Regarding the purchasing policy, does it have to go to RFP because of the amount? Uh, Madam Mayor, Council, the, um, this would have to go to a tender or an RFP. Um, but if we want, we can um, we can sole, not sole, well, we could sole source. We could tender on um, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So we would get vendors bidding on the same units. Okay, I just wanted to sure. make sure we're aboard. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I think we had Councillor Washington and then Councillor Corbiel. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So in previous, in 2013, uh, brand S was everybody had it. So if you were in the pulp mill, their bottles would exchange with your bottles in an emergency. They say City Works, everybody had the same thing and all your other volunteer fire departments had the same. A budget meeting in 2013, um, it went out for RFP and brand X was 10 cents cheaper, so we went with that. So while our stuff got scrapped out, we put in this and we've been having trouble with it since 2013. So now you wanna go back to brand S, which is the same as everybody's. Um, would it not make more sense to buy brand new today rather than like you said, you wanted to go into that used, you had a line in there about used brand S that you could buy from the used car dealer there. So it would make more sense to buy the brand new, fully warrantied brand S complete today, 19 to 2020 models and would have a lifetime warranty. Yeah, and the recommendation that I've made um, in the report is to uh, purchase new, um, in part because the new packs come with that lifetime warranty. Um, it does return us back to being in line with the same manufacturer as all of our, our mutual aid partners. Um, the other reason for it is that uh, every so often um, the, the NFPA standard is changed and there's additional uh, safety features that are built into the, the packs in order to meet the standard. Um, since the time that we purchased these last SCBA, there's been uh, three revisions to that NFPA standard. So there's been three rounds of safety improvements that have been made. Uh, this would get us the uh, the very latest in in uh, those safety enhancements, whereas a, a used pack would not. Thanks. Councillor Corbiel. Well, the one question, uh, one of the questions I had was answered, which is, uh, I guess, brand S is it's called is the one that's used by most fire departments, and that's the one we we went away from, correct? And uh, just looking at this list of um, <clears throat> incidents that have happened over the last couple of years, and one as recent as uh, late November of last year, some of these are, are pretty serious, uh, the issues around alarms not functioning correctly, for example. So, you know, I, for one, think we have to move on this, and, and I do uh, tend to agree that, uh, you know, getting the lifetime warranty makes a lot of sense. And it's kind of unfortunate that we didn't plan for this, but uh, we are where we are. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Paulson. Yeah, I just I'm just trying to keep the math straight here right now. But um, to replace them brand new uh, would be 198 thousand. We do have 60 well 67 thousand in earth already. 
for them. So that cost would be offset by um, close to $70,000. So that's 130,000. I don't want to spend the money, but on the other hand, if we lost one firefighter or, or there was a situation inside a fire, um, you, you can't put a cost on this stuff. And um, <laughs> I, uh, I know that uh, a couple of the councillors and Madam Mayor have had these units on and have used them and realize exactly how important they are in a, in a situation. Um, the advent of, uh, of uh, cancer in firefighters Firefighters virtually use these all the time, I think, now when they're in proximity to a fire just to uh, reduce, help reduce the exposure to cancer uh, causing things. Like I say, I, I'm struggling with, with the cost, but God, I would, I would never forgive myself if something serious happened to a firefighter. Mm -hmm. If we cheaped out or um, didn't do the right thing. It comes down to safety, it's the bottom line. And uh, this is a pretty critical safety department for any community. Um, I don't know who we're going to steal $130,000 from to pay for these. Maybe, well, and, maybe and just we'll, for clarity, maybe we'll, maybe we'll pick up truck. I don't know. <laughs> just for clarity, I, I believe that this is uh, that is new money. That is, the earth has already been factored into that. So that would be. Oh, okay. So the Correct. actual cost would be two hundred. Two hundred. Correct. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Even <laughs> more. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Were there other questions on this? Okay. Um, I'm curious if um, I, I agree with um, you know most people who have spoken that um, we need to move forward and and change this equipment. Um, that doesn't make it any easier to find that money given mm -hmm. you know the budget constraints that we're already looking at for this year so i'm wondering um if there you know if there are opportunities to push out other things um that maybe are not as um, urgently needed um for you know the safety of the firefighters um and maybe the fire chief could look at if there's any um, options to be brought forward that could help fund this um, I know there's not a lot, you know, in the capital budget or anything like that, but um, I think that before we, I think we, we likely all want to move forward on this, but I think we need to know if there's other, any ways that we can save um, at least a portion of those funds. And maybe it's not replacing um, the truck this year. Maybe it's looking at pushing the fire truck out a year. Um, I think we have to look at all options available and um, reasonably before we make this decision on how it will be funded. Councillor Solda. And I agree with our mayor, but the, I have, do have a question for Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, for people who, in the public, that have questions on what we're doing here, can they submit questions or how do they make contact with us? Because yeah. last year we used to be able to ask, they used to be able to, um, uh, yeah. See you. Madam Mayor, near the end of the, the agenda, you'll see um, item F, C, F. Um, oh public engagement next steps and that's mm -hmm. at that point okay. in the agenda it's envision council will discuss how to go forward okay super I, I did note that at the beginning of the meeting as oh, well okay <laughs> um, that said we don't have um, I don't think we have monitoring of social media for this meeting like we have some in the sometimes past, in the past um, so that's something that we can discuss during that section if we want to have a meeting where we are taking um, input online um, I've also been um, on social media telling when people are commenting on budget, um, sending them Davina's email. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, she thanks you. To, um, as you know, to welcoming them to provide input if people would like to send input for the budget. Um, so I've posted that email many, many times, um, and uh, we'll see if we receive any feedback that way. Okay, so lots of opportunities still for people. Um, okay. I don't think that was to do with this question, no, but no. Um, I think. I just I think questions regarding sure. the fire department and I said come to a meeting but they're yeah. not here. Yeah, absolutely. I think you just gave our fire chief marching orders. Go away and tell us how we're going to pay for this. Yeah, so I mean I think if if council agrees on that and I don't know if there is any way um, you know to take it out of somewhere in the fire budget but I think we need to reasonably look um, to see if there is and I anywhere. Yeah, and um, and then move forward that way with more discussions on this. 45,000. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank um you. Moving on to the next item. 
We have uh, from the Western Vancouver Island Industrial Heritage Society an email from Ken Rutherford um, updating the budget, asking for an additional $20,000. Um, CAO, could you speak to um, this part? I believe there's not currently any funds in the budget for the train. Could you clarify? Madam Mayor, there's currently no uh, funds in the draft budget for, um, there wasn't for SCBA or for um, rail service. And, okay. and by the discussion you just had, um, at the next, um, and let me clarify this, did you direct us to put the $198,000 in the budget, um, for in the draft budget, or did you want to wait until you get a report from the fire chief? I think we should wait for a report from the fire chief. Um, I mean, we could make the decision to add it in now if we want to recommend that. Um, well, it's a working document. I think we're heading in the same direction regardless, um, but we'd like to look at options for where it will be funded from first. Okay, so it won't be in the next draft budget, but you'll get a report from the fire chief. We okay. won't forget about it. Thank you. And uh, on the rail, no, there's nothing in the, in the draft budget right now for rail service. Um, again, we would need direction from council. Okay. Um, so are there questions specifically for Ken, who's here? Councillor Corbiel. Well, the uh, actual budget that uh, Mr. Rutherford put together has expenses for um, a part-time uh, manager and a, and a railway mechanic. And now we're, we're talking about a, another position. Is there any possibility, Ken, of trying to, I suspect, the manager position to try to combine the person that does uh, more of the, uh, the planning and the PR with that management position? So what, um, after meeting with yourself and the mayor and, and uh, Councillor Washington, um, looked at uh, the marketing and uh, a marketing plan and advertising with uh, a marketing expert that I talked to, uh, one recommended from the city. And uh, basically it's not adding a person, So, but we would um, have to pay for a contract with uh, a marketing person to develop a plan and then help us with some of the advertising through the year to make sure we're getting it out to the proper resources. One of the things we found with, uh, with uh, our last experience of operating the train with the manager didn't have marketing experience that was um, going to bring in um, a bigger population of, of tourists. So we want to rely on the expertise. I don't envision the person that we're going to hire as a part-time manager to have that expertise. Um, and so um, the budget reflects uh, materials, whether it's brochures and all that kind of stuff besides just the person's cost. So whatever, whatever we need to do to advertise the railroad to make it a success, that's where that marketing money is. They're not hiring a full-time or a part-time person to look after that, similar to what uh, the McLean Mill had as a person to look after weddings and all that kind of uh, marketing proposal, so. If I could, Madam Mayor, so did you talk to, to somebody who's actually interested and, and could do it for, for the price that you um, put forth? The person that I was talking to that gave me uh, help with putting an uh, extra $15,000 into the budget um, would be more of the person that does the plan, not necessarily a person that um, would do some of the finer detail. So uh, we would have to look into how we would handle that. Now with a, a full plan, um, maybe our manager then would be able to implement some of that. May have to have some help with some other resources uh, on uh, as needed basis, but uh, we'd have the contract to develop a good strategy and a good plan moving forward is the beginning of it. Thank you, and um, I appreciate that recognition and agree with you um, very much that um, the person you're going to get for the train manager is not going to be, um, you know, is not going to be strong enough in marketing. You're unlikely to find somebody with those two skill sets, um, and I think it's really important that we recognize and put value on um, that none of this will likely be successful if you don't have the right marketing and the right plan. So. Um, I think those do need to be two separate, um, you know, whether it's a contractor or an employee, but um, we can't rely on finding someone who will have both of those skill sets because I would think 
think that would be very unlikely. Since we operated the, the mill and the train a few years ago, Technical Safety has uh, Technical Safety BC has come up with more regulations on the operation. So, whoever we have as a, hire as a part-time manager is going to be more dedicated to to regulation to make sure all the training is done properly, so that um, our assessments from Technical BC aren't going to be uh, out of whack because we haven't done things properly. So that's going to be a, a, a strict requirement for our manager is the, the technical safety side of things. Okay, thank you. Are there more questions on this? Okay, um, I have more questions. Um, we, how many runs does this um, envision? I know that we had that in our original presentation, but I don't. Um, off the top of my head. I've, I've got it over there, but I think it's, um, was it 44 days of operation and um, something like 162 um, runs, um, okay. something in that range. Sure. Um, and all the steam train? All the steam train, based on uh, our experience in the past that whenever we've had, uh, whether it's the big or the small diesel engine on there, People came looking for the uh, steam experience and because that's how it was marketed and uh, they said we'll come back another time and whether they came back we don't know but uh, it was not a draw to have. Um, there are a lot of railroads out there that market on the, the running of uh, riding in a train and it's not necessarily a steam train. We market the uniqueness of the steam train and we want to provide that opportunity to the passengers. Okay. Um. I think one of my concerns um, with the budget as we have it right now is it does, um, you know, obviously almost solely rely on um, on city funds. And um, over the, we've met a few times and, and um, the message that we've kind of tried to consistently bring forward from the city is that um, we don't want taxpayers to be funding, um, you know, just about all of this um, and so we've talked about trying to find sponsorships trying to find um, you know more fundraising opportunities um, and yet you know we've come back with um, a large budget mostly funded by the city and I do think the budget is well put together um, but what we do seem to be missing is those other revenue sources um, and I don't know how we get to that um, but I think that a challenge is you know that we really are just back where back where we started. Um, we haven't found other revenue opportunities for this. I, I think one of the things that in putting the budget together is the unknown of how many passengers we're going to have. So uh, based on uh, 4,500 passengers, um, it comes up with a number that the city, uh, I've asked the city for it, $170,000. If we can utilize some good marketing and, and get the resources out there that, so that uh, there is a surplus at the end of the year, obviously that's going to reduce the future budgets. But um, because the, we're a nonprofit society and don't have the pockets to cover a shortfall, we're not in business that we can go to the bank and take a loan, um, we had to be somewhat on the cautious side in what we're asking for. Um, if if we, if we do well, and then that's going to make a, a next year's budget ask different because we'll have the opportunity to build on that uh, resource. And we're only running a short run this year. We're not going all the way to the mill, so we're not offering a, a long train ride. We can't offer or ask for a high revenue source from the public. Um, so it is a tough position. I understand the city's position on there, and uh, I don't know. A uh, definitive answer to tell you that uh, we can go and we can get lots of sponsorship dollars because we're starting out from scratch and um, we can't go to the bank. You're the bank, and we don't want to come back at the end <laughs> of the year. We don't want to be the bank. <laughs> we don't, and we don't want to come back at the end of the year and say we're fifty thousand dollars short after asking for one hundred seventy thousand dollars either. So um, it's it's the best we can do. Okay. And what is the current status of the ste steam train? Um, Technical safety has granted us permission to put the tubes in. We've got that resolved that uh, we were having um, issues with the inspector to try to move forward. So um, 
I expected this week for uh, the volunteer boilermakers to be back and starting to put the tubes in the boiler. So that's a, a major step forward, and uh, I would think it should be ready to go this year. No problem at all. Okay. But. Councilor Solta. Thank you for the presentation. Um, regarding a cost per ride to take that steam train out, how much does it cost just to do that short run? The, what uh, in putting the revenue side together, uh, it was nine dollars and forty cents average per passenger, based on um, a fee for adult, senior, youth, and child at different rates. But it averaged out to about nine dollars and forty cents okay. per rider. So, what's the total cost to take that steam? Not without with the without the passengers. Do How much does the cost? expense? Yes, sorry. The expense. Thank you. The expense. Thank you. I'm glad. Reading my mind. It's again partly an unknown, unknown that we're going to be um, rebricking the boiler to burn diesel fuel versus uh, bunker C. So the carbon footprint will be much less. It's probably, I understand, one of the biggest sources of, of uh, carbon uh, city owned uh, pollutant in town, if you want to call it that, uh, that train, because it does make a lot of smoke. So we're going to make convert it to burn diesel fuel. The diesel fuel is twice the cost of bunker C, but we'll reduce the carbon footprint. So one thing we haven't run it before with diesel fuel, so we don't know what the consumption is going to be. So all I can do is say it's going to take the same amount of fuel at twice the cost. Hopefully, the plan will work out that it will be less costly, but. Again, we're, we're getting into new unknown territory there as far as the, what the cost is. So I haven't put all those costs together and tell you that it, uh, strictly without revenue what the cost per run is. Uh, I, I can find that out and if you like, give you the information. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Paulson. Just a quick question. Can um, I know in years gone by, and this has nothing to do with the steam, uh, um, we actually had some contracts with BCIT for um, for training. Uh, is there an opportunity to continue that on, or is there a reason they, why we they have dropped that program? Oh, okay. So okay. it's not. That's and uh, <laughs> that was, and, and again, um, that was a revenue source for the society. The society provided all the the conductors to do the training and everything. So it was a source for the society. But no, it's not there anymore. Okay, Councillor Poon. Thank you. Um, I know you you mentioned converting to diesel fuel. Uh, is there any scope to convert to a steam electric? No, I don't think electric electric drive uh, would work with a 1929 vintage vehicle. <laughs> oh, because there there are examples uh, of steam electric locomotives, right? So yeah. a steam powered generator and uh, but the the electric motor to drive the uh, the side rods on a steam engine i'm not familiar with that technology yeah. okay any other questions or further direction we want to give back um i heard the comment it's a work in progress um, i don't think it's a work in progress unless we give direction of um you know how we want to move forward and if we want to see changes um, if not we're really just mulling it over still so are, is there any direction that we would like to give or more information um, options we'd like to see? Or are we going to just um, consider to dis uh, continue to discuss it at our next meeting? Okay. If there's any questions that or, you know, information that would help um, to be brought back, this is the time to ask for it. If not, we're going to be coming back to the same budget um, for consideration at our next meeting. Councillor Corbiel. Well, I, for one, want to see this work. And uh, I know, uh, Ken, you've probably sharpened your pencil likely as much as you can. But if there's any room to uh, you know, fine tune this, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Because uh, we will get to a point in the very near future where we say yay or nay. And um, as I say, I'd love to say yay. It, uh, I think the closer we get to uh, something that's um, uh, more uh, manageable for our for our budget, the, the better. Um, and for all I know, you've probably done the best you can. But if you could improve it in any way, that would be much appreciated. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll have a look at it. But uh, there are so many unknowns there, and and I'd say the uh, the inability to fund a shortfall is is 
really makes me nervous about uh, about asking. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's an important consideration um, that it is the first year looking at it, and and you know, we know you can't fund a shortfall. Yeah. Um, you had presented an option of seventy five thousand. Um, if we wanted, I believe it was seventy five thousand. Um, if we wanted to look at special events only, um, I'm curious for that option if there was actually a budget made up for that because I'm looking at this budget and thinking a lot of these things are not per run costs they're hard costs that you're going to have for the year regardless so um, is that 75,000 um, for special events only actually doable or was that just a number that was um, like, because I don't, I don't think there's a hundred thousand dollars of things we could reduce here. There's, you know, forty-one thousand dollars in fuel only. There's so, like, if we were to run it fewer times, how would we drop the costs potentially a hundred thousand um, dollars? Without going back with my paperwork to see what the actual number was, there was three options that I think we, we, I gave you. One was to run it complete. Uh, one was special runs, and one was just fixed maintenance. Was I think was about thirty or forty thousand. Um, so if, if we're only going to run um, on special occasions, we still have to do the, the training. We still have to do the certification of the, or the maintenance of the railroad to get it certified to be able to run the train the short distance. Um, then the fuel cost, uh, if we're only running 15 or 20 runs, the fuel goes way down compared to what our cost is to run 160 runs. Um, the, the, some of the labor costs are going to be far less, maintenance would be less, the um, cost of the engineer is less. Um, we've still got some marketing. We probably wouldn't do as big a, a marketing plan because there's no point in marketing to the tourist industry when you're only going to have a few weekends where you're running a special train. That would be more for um, the local population, like the Santa Run or a, um, a Halloween run or um, a summer steam special or something along the lines that you market to the local people, maybe the center of the island, and you get that that business. You're not going to put a full <clears throat> $25,000 into a marketing plan for for five events so and say three or four runs each event. I, I just couldn't see that need to spend that kind of money. So without going through each line item and trying to break out where that comes from, those are some of the, the bigger items that okay. we've seen. You. Thank you. Councillor Paulson? Uh, just um, I concur with Councillor Corbeil. I, I would really like to see this run. I think it's part of our identity. But um, I, I think probably it's going to be another few weeks or a month before I have a full picture of the context of the budget overall. And that may be where we come back to you and say, well, um, here's what we're going to allocate and you, you know you develop a, um, a project or a, a within that dollar value and I mean it, I think that applies to all city departments I mean we we will have to have a look at the whole context um, and say look at you know jigging it here's what we can afford in each department so um, I, I'm just not quite there with the snapshot or the overall picture yet Kind of, um, I'm still uncomfortable. Five point nine percent. I fully understand. I, I don't envy your position, Ron. It's a, it's a tough job. I, I uh, all we can do is give you what uh, to, to make a successful venture. There's the number. If, if we can work it, great. If not, it'll probably never run again. So, not to put any pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you for the report, Ken. Um, man, if we could just get somebody to sponsor that fuel and maybe sponsor or insurance, uh, it would change things immensely. Uh, yeah. But again, if it's not going to, if they can't see it, it's hard for them. It's hard to, for your, any marketing to go in and say, this could be yours for $41,000, or this could be yours. Well, in, in, in some respects, we're already behind the ball now with marketing. Um, most publications have gone out for this January, year's yeah. stuff, so uh, we're already behind the eight ball in that. And, and like you say, uh, until we can be firm on what we're going to offer, we can't go to anybody and say, hey, would you like to sponsor 
a train ride or whatever it might be and try to reduce those costs. Once we get in there and we can do that, um, then we can come back to council with um, maybe some repayment at the end of the year. I, I, that would be that would be the optimum that we could do, but uh, and then or put that profit into next year's venture and it, the, the run to McLean's mill would be a reduced cost because that's the bigger cost for the city than this year's. Um, but. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions on this topic? Okay, thank you very much for the information you provided. Look forward to uh, your report. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on, we have the CAO Acting Director of Finance to provide a review of the 2020 capital plans. Madam Mayor, if you wanted to recess, this would be a good time. If not, we can carry yeah, on. Yeah, we could recess. Okay, <laughs> okay recess. Five minutes. gone through these already so it's an additional have we someone correct me I think we've gone through these already um, so just an additional opportunity to ask questions um, make sure we have an understanding of where things are being funded from um, and anything else so CAO you can lead us through this thank you madam mayor I'm gonna ask the acting director of finance to join me at the lecture I'll, I'll sit here she can work from there we'll tag team this Great. and we'll bring up different managers to speak to different projects okay if, if council has questions, just uh, stop us, please. Um, to start, uh, I think it's helpful if um, Ms. McCauley orients us to the document and tells us, tells us what we're looking at. Okay, so as we go through, um, just to highlight, um, the top your strategic uh, priorities are going to be labeled in blue. So above every year, you're going to see that blue bar and that's going to be your strategic priorities and as you move into the green that's going to be um, your remaining non-strat projects. Um, each column uh, represents uh, either a reserve or a different fund. Um, so we have uh, operating the operating column. When you see the operating reserve column that means it's a, a carry forward reserve from a prior year. So maybe in a prior uh, budget, we've reserved those funds and we've carried forward that project into this year, uh, or it's come out of a, a reserve surplus fund. Um, so the remainder, if we wanna uh, scoot across so we can see the different uh, reserves here. Um, so we have our different reserves. Uh, water operating uh, comes out of our current water operating budget so that would be funded by our water and sewer fees when you see it coming out of the reserve that's from our infrastructure reserve fund um, the rest of the we have a, an, another category as well that um, is sometimes funded through different things and we've tried to to note in there if it is so if it's uh, carbon if it's funded through carbon you'll use usually find that in the other column or if we've had donations from the community it's also going to be noted in that other column so madam mayor working um, from the top down um, as Rosalyn told us that uh, the blue items are are um, directly out of this, the city's strategic plan and the first one is the community safety building and it's um, it's council's vision to develop a community safety building somewhere in the uptown district and um, we've budgeted $150,000. Uh, we envision leasing a building, uh, not purchasing at this point, but we, um, we budgeted $150,000 for renovation um, to suit our needs of that building. And this is speculative, if you like. Um, I believe it's uh, similar to the cost that Calma River experienced when they, um, but, I could, but I could be wrong on that. Um, the money's coming from um, policing reserve, reserves, so um, money that we don't spend just stays in those reserves. Campbell River was 80,000, okay. but um, they moved into a building that probably was in significantly better mm -hmm. shape than what we probably will be looking at with our current stock of buildings. That's all. 
Okay, any further questions on that item? <coughs> any questions on this? And of course, right now, this is largely, I mean, a lot of it would be unknown given that That's right. we don't know what building or anything yet. And, and again, as Rosalind told us, that doesn't affect taxation in 2020. Okay. Those are funds that were taxed in previous years and unspent. Um, they, were, they were surplus basically in the policing and we've held them in a reserve. Okay. 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 Seeing no questions. Uh, the next project down, Third Avenue upgrades. We had budgeted, I believe, four hundred thousand dollars for that. Um, and um, as we told you earlier tonight, our engineering uh, estimates show um, nine hundred thousand dollars cost. No, sorry, I think one point three for that. Uh, Wolf Takma can speak to the project now if you like. Um, and there is a report um, with an engineer's report attached coming to the next meeting of council next Monday. I think uh, my preference would be to wait until we have the full report um, so that we can have more of an informed conversation on it. Okay. You can also see there there's uh, funds coming from water and sewer as well. So while we are doing that project, we would um, undertake some other work as well. And the city welcoming sign, um, $150,000 earmarked from operating. Um, we haven't yet, uh, council hasn't yet determined um, or given direction on what the sign um, looks like what the size of it is what the location will be if there'll be more than one size so we think 150,000 is a, a safe budget estimate again subject to whatever council wants to tell us to do councillor Solta I love the idea about the city welcoming sign but just to take some budget down I'm just throwing this at the rest of council why can't we put so much away in the kitty and then maybe next year you know like you know put half away into it uh, yes, and do it in phases, and when we have the full amount of the money, then we can go ahead with the sign. It's in the budget. I'm just throwing this at council, um, trying to look at ways of cutting some things back. So I just thought I'd throw it out there. I think we can do whatever we want to do. Um, if council wishes to do that, we certainly can. Um, that said, I think, um, it, CAO, maybe you could update us on how do we actually get to a point where we will have a rough idea of what this costs? Mm -hmm. um, I know that as a council, we've looked at other signs that have been done in other communities. Um, and, you know, I think we all have a rough idea of what we're willing to spend. Um, and, uh, but how do we actually get there? So um, what's your plan? So we've started some work on this. We've actually engaged the Chamber of Commerce to do um, basically a, to, to capture the work that's already been done on welcoming signs. There's been some other studies and work done. So they'll, they're working right now on a report for us that shows um, work that they've done, work that's been done by, by city and charrette and that kind of thing. Um, when that report's done, um, it's a cost effective for us first, by the way, to have them do it for us. When that's done, it'll come to council with a staff covering report to say, look, this is, this is what everything that's in this welcome sign file, just so you're fully aware and updated, and you can give direction on what next steps are. And next steps might be, um, you might, it, that report will also include um, signage from other communities on the island and, and a few um, from around the province. So with that report, we're hopeful that you'll, you're able to say, we like component this or component that or that from different signs. So go engage a designer that has, a, has these four elements in it. And um, that will help us sharpen our budget um, projections as well. Will that report give us an idea of what other communities have spent as well? Yeah, we've asked for spending as well. So I think that yeah. would be the appropriate time for us to determine if we want to, um, you know, cut the budget in half, for instance. Um, to do it right now, I think likely is just, um, you know, not an informed exercise. So I think um, when we have that report in front of us, we can determine what an <coughs> adequate budget is and if we want to move forward with the project at that point. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, moving down into operating capital projects, uh, administration, computer equipment replacement, and server upgrade. Uh, Mr. Pellick can speak to those if you like. They're coming from Equipment Replacement Reserve Fund. I think we have heard um, about those projects. Are there follow-up questions on them? Okay. Um, sure, come on forward then. You need to use a microphone so they can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, aspect of server upgrade refresh five-year cycle shouldn't actually be there that's been requested to have been moved to 2023 yeah wonderful 
Well, there's not, unfortunately, because that's <laughs> not coming out of general <laughs> revenue. Um, the only question that I have for um, the acting director of finance is all of these things that are um, that are listed in IRF, um, can we assume that the full amount has been IRFed for them? Um, or are there shortages that, um, like I know in the past we've been concerned about the health of the IRF fund, um, and we've had it presented to us, you know, we need 60000 for this, only 40000 has been saved in IRF, and so we're drawing an additional 20000 that wasn't saved. So when we um, have made the budgets for um, the, the current earth funds in there, um, most of it has been drawn from the actual earth schedule where we've calculated what the actual cost is. Um, right off the top of my head, I don't think any of the costs that are in that column right now are above what is in our earth fund. Um, when we go through all of our transport vehicles, we, we are directly going off um, our, our earth and we check that uh, with some of the managers um, on a yearly basis to see if they're in line and we adjust the earth fund and then put it into the budget. Um, so everything in there is, is directly from the earth. Perfect. schedule so I think just as a matter of um, practice for us if there's ever anything that um, you know we are looking to spend more than we've contributed um, and planned and budgeted for that um, that we should be told about that so that we're aware um, and then we everything else we can assume is you know what we were anticipating along the way perfect okay 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 so assuming there's no questions about the IT so we'll make a change on that, that 2023 project as well. Awesome. That's yeah. great. Okay. Uh, moving on to the fire department. Um, uh, these, of Mayor, course, we've had I see the Dodge Caliber up there that we told you earlier tonight um, is, is moved to 2022, right? Yeah. So we'll delete that from that line. Which? Um, under administration. Oh, yes, that's right. And no, no amount in there. What happens is in our working document, we leave it there. We put a note to say it's been moved forward and then in this case the note's gone and the car is still there I think that's yeah. what happened yeah okay so fire department you've you've spoken about these things do you want to uh, do you have more questions or um, questions are there any more questions on this Councillor Corbiel well I think we've already pointed out that um, uh, we're all probably behind buying the new air packs and uh, wondering how we fund it and I I look at the uh, jaws of life or whatever the new term is for it and uh, I almost got the impression that was a nice to do, to do not a absolutely have to do so uh, you know I would hope that potentially that could be put off for a year or, or more if at all possible yeah being that the um, the fire engine has not uh, been released for an RFP um, there's an ability to configure the space to host um, the existing tools that we have perhaps uh, it's something that we can certainly look at anyway and and bring it back um, at a subsequent meeting Thank you. Thanks. okay CAO so, Madam Mayor, under transportation services, the two vehicles that we spoke about earlier in the question and answer portion, um, I, I'd just like to, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to scroll down to 2021 on transportation services uh, because there's quite a lengthy list of vehicles in 2021. And um, the reason for that is that those vehicles in 2021, some of them were scheduled to be replaced in 2020, some in previous years. And they've been moved forward, as Wilf told us, in the budget. So um, our staff are very diligent at, um, at not replacing vehicles that don't need to be replaced. And you'll see some of those are 2004, 2005, 2006. Um, and we've pushed those back further out into the budget because there's, there's life left in those. We don't need to replace them yet. So we've, we've had earth contributions for them. We're continuing to run them until we get into a situation where it doesn't make financial sense or operational sense to operate them. So I just wanted to point out to you the, the really long list of vehicles that we're pushing forward um, year to year, but eventually some of those need to be replaced. Eventually they all need to be replaced. And this year, if we can scroll back up, there's two vehicles that were due to be replaced this year that staff uh, think it's in our best interest to replace. And if you have specific questions on those, um, I'm sure Wolf's happy to answer them. Questions? No questions? Thank you. 
uh, road construction and sewer storm water projects. Um, so these, um, I'll ask Wilf to come up and speak to these. Uh, let's see, we made <coughs> somewhat of an effort to combine um, the road pieces with the storm and the water and the sewer pieces. I think there's still a couple of loose ends a little bit. As you'll see below, there's some storm, um, a couple of storm pieces there. Um, I think ideally we had intended may still in the process bring those up so they're all in the same line. Um, so a few projects that we're proposing for 2020 are completion kind of of the 6th Avenue corridor, so the, the one remaining block on the uh, north end from Argyle to Angus. So the, the little terminology there, the PTP, that just means prior to paving and water and storm on that section. Um, yeah, so I think we're populated across there except for um, down below where you'll see the, the, the storm portion of that. And I don't recall offhand what the total project cost is. So, Will, from that line, we see 100, 110 for paving, correct? And then if we go over, we'll see an entry for water and an entry for sewer. Is that what you're saying? Is that it, there 80 and 125? Yeah, possibly. It just might just be a way the fund the way the funding is. Um, I don't I don't have the uh, the breakdown of the okay. of all the components in front of me, but uh, basically the the total cost. Is, is to the right okay. of that portion. Yeah, so it's a little easier if they are all together or if yeah. they're all completely separate, so sure. I don't have the okay. individual breakdowns in front of me. Madam Mayor, we're, we're working with working financial documents. We're trying to get council a document where it's all in one, in one line. Um, we haven't made that transition yet. It's just um, from our working documents to a presentable document. I think this is much clearer yeah. than in previous years where mm -hmm. we've had, you know, different parts of the same project broken out into different sections. Um, you know, when I look at this, I can see that the Melrose Street project is $1.04 million. The only thing that I, um, if I'm understanding correctly, mm -hmm. there's um, 480000 from gas tax and uh, 560000 for that project, specifically from sewer. Um, we don't see an amount specifically for paving. Obviously, there is paving in that project. Would that just be coming from the gas tax portion? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions on this? Councillor Corbiel? Uh, just out of curiosity, Wilf, uh, of all the projects that were budgeted for last year, how successful were you at completing all of them? Uh, again, I don't, have, I don't have last year's list in front of me. I'd say there are some, some of the smaller water and sewer projects. Um, I know we had identified, uh, and they're still budgeted for, we still plan to do them. There was a couple of um, replacements of, of sewer in lanes and things like that. So um, the, bit, the larger projects are, are complete or even underway as we're, as we're still working on like 16th Avenue. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. Seeing no other questions. Thank you. Um, the traffic upgrades. Yeah, do you want to go through all the road construction or just move on to? Uh, I traffic? think if there's no questions on the road construction, okay. um, we've heard previously about the projects. Yeah, and traffic upgrades, we're trying to, and you'll see in the five-year plan, we've got money under uh, replacement of signal controllers. Um, we've got seven. They essentially have a, a life of about seven years. And this year, we, we've so far been okay and not not gotten ourselves into trouble but the actual cost to replace a signal controller is about 25 or 26 thousand um, our electrical contractors have said we need to have a spare on hand because uh, we could yeah could be in trouble with <laughs> with not having that so that that's their their intention is to keep a spare on hand use that in the following year keep keep buying one each year and keep replacing um, one as we go any questions on that, Councillor Paulson? I just see you referred to the Tenth and Roger, um, and that Tenth and Roger signal was out of order for three or four days. I We've think had that. quite a few issues with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I gather that this is a result of some ongoing problems there. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, those storm projects that are identified there—they're actually captured or 
they can be combined with the ones above. Um, we do have a number of um, projects identified for relining of, of storm mains. Um, they, they're shown as 120 each. It's more of a total uh, capital cost of 600,000 to do those five jobs, how they line up exactly um, for each one will remain to be seen once, once that job is tendered. Are there questions on that work? Councillor Corbiel? Just a question, what is relining? Basically, it's a process whereby you don't dig it up. You work from manhole to manhole, um, shoot a sock through, through it, and uh, by, I think, a UV process, you harden it, and then go in and cut out the, uh, the connections. So yeah, it's it's fairly expensive, but not near as expensive as, as some of these deep, deep crossings. So okay. saves having to dig them up. Okay, perfect. No other questions? Down to the works other section. Nice. Oh, the McLean Mill Dam. <laughs> <laughs> CAO, would you like Madam to speak Mayor. to this today? Sure, Madam Mayor. I know one way we can stop speaking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that'll happen. <laughs> I'm starting to think you enjoy speaking about it. Uh, I Madam sure Mayor. don't. So we, um, as you know, we budgeted um, $233,000 in, um, in 2019. Uh, much of that was reserves from, or unallocated uh, contingency from 2018. And we went to tender on the project and we weren't, um, the budget price or the tender price is obviously considerably higher. So it's back in the budget with that 233, some of which has been expended. Um, obviously, and a further um, looks like $140,000 in uh, gas taxes to um, <coughs> to get to where we think um, the price of that project will be when we tender it. Council directed us to retender within six months, I think, or something like that last fall. So mm -hmm. um, we're holding to see what <coughs> council wants to do budget-wise before we retender. Okay. Are there questions on this? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, City Works facility relocation. Yeah, Wolf plan. asked me if he could speak about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess, Madam Mayor, to reiterate um, from the previous meeting where we brought uh, a report from McGill. Um, the result of that report was to start moving down the road of, of relocating if that's council's wish. Uh, we would need some money to do some preliminary engineering and also some, some assessment of sites and that sort of thing. Okay, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the next process we're gonna do that's in order to see if there's any funding out there available. Uh, that would be part of it, yeah. yeah. So. We don't do this there's no we'll, we'll never know if there's a grant or anything out there correct and i think yeah i think you need to do this in order to even be eligible for grants so. councillor poon thank you um how does the relocation of the site uh fit in with our strategic plan That's Madam a good Mayor, question. I would say, Madam Mayor, continuation of uh, delivery of quality services. Um, if we're going to continue to serve to serve the public day to day, and if we're going to be able to respond in emergencies, we need our $10 million worth of equipment and uh, and other other stock and employees to be in a safe, dry location. Nobody wants to have to spend money on something like this. Uh, we've got a city works yard that, if it doesn't fall down in an earthquake, which it probably will, the report says, um, it'll be underwater. And... Um, this fact of life, and um, we can't mitigate the tsunami risk. And um, I suggest it's it's prudent for us to get ourselves that project ready to the point where we're eligible for grants when grant funding does come available. Otherwise, at some point, we'll be um, um, paying a larger share ourselves. I guess I don't really understand um, why this is a priority now and it hasn't. So this has been a risk for forever. Um, you know why now at um, a time where we are looking at a larger than average um, budget increase rather than in years where we have had a lot more flexibility with our budget why is it um, now a priority 
So, so it was uh, the point was raised raised after exercise coastal response, um, which the scenario for that was a 9.0 magnitude Cascadia fault um, subduction earthquake with a 20 meter tsunami um, following, which is the risk that we're exposed to. And um, in the follow up of that or the after action review, um, it was recommended in the report um, from the province that we should investigate the location of the city's work works yard relative to those two risks, earthquake and tsunami. So in 2018, I believe Wolf um, Council allocated $30,000 to, <coughs> to investigate the location and the structures relative to those risks. Um, we retained McGill Engineering. They've given us that report. We only just received that report January. Just before Christmas. And that, yeah, so I um, apologize for not having it in the draft budget sooner or having the conversation sooner. We didn't, we just got the report and we didn't want to sit on it and miss the budget cycle. So that's why we brought it forward now. Councillor Solda. So this is not the first time this has come up to council in the past, this has been brought forward um, about the the works yard being in the tsunami zone. And in 1992, March 10th, did you see the UMA Engineering Limited did a study on this um, tsunami inundation zone study? Have you seen that? Are we are we asking if in 1992 on March 10th you saw that <laughs> I report? I guess not. I guess not. No, I'm just. Saying, you let us know. <laughs> Please answer that past. question. Yeah. No, I'm I'm just kind of curious to know if it has been brought forth to the city there was one done and um, there was we, there was discussion in the past regarding um, moving the works yard up to where the um, is it the um, school works yard is at one point when it was up for sale and yeah maybe in school I just wanted to give you a little bit of history on that you know um, anyways I'll shut up that's fine <laughs> I know that McGill did did review all the uh, the other previous reports. And Councillor Corbiel. So, out of curiosity, we've had some uh, tsunami warnings um, and been given you know, a bit of time to, to do something. What did what was the reaction at the the works yard? Where was equipment moved or anything like that? So the the three a.m. Madam Mayor, the 3 a.m. February of 2019, January. Uh, or January, whenever it was, um, that was based on an earthquake out of Alaska, I believe. I think the time frame for that potential wave to, to hit Port Alberni was a number of hours um, later, so there was quite a bit of warning. Um, the experts in, in the exercise are saying this will happen quite close off the coast of Port Alberni and it's like 15 minutes. So in 15 minutes of that were to happen in the middle of the night, um, there would be no opportunity for, for people to, to get there, move equipment or, or really do anything. Was equipment moved at the last uh, warning? Did yes, you it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. there was quite a few uh, people that came in once they had looked after their own families. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Other questions? Okay. Seeing none. Aeroview demolition, um, we've discussed earlier, is just a placeholder at this point and not impacting taxation. Um, parks, Penny Lane Bridge replacement, I know we discussed last year, uh, assuming it is just one year worse. <laughs> That's the spirit, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, so we have earmarked the $25,000 for bridge replacement based on safety concerns, yes. For sure, okay. Any questions on that bridge? Council actually went for a walk over it last year, just happened to um, during the coldest night of the year walk. So um, I think that was right around budget time and not sure if we were uh, if we it made us agree with our decision to not fund it or <laughs> kind of feel like we should take it back but um not surprised to see it back this year madam mayor we'd love to uh the parks recreation and heritage staff would love to play a game of frisbee golf with you and we can all enjoy penny lane bridge together wonderful and um victoria key shelter project so um, this so this is five thousand dollars rolled over from 2019 and the rotary club has committed has committed the other fifteen thousand dollars i think we committed fifteen thousand last year so yeah. so a portion uh, has been spent, and so this is the, the remaining five. Yeah. And the project scope is still the same. Correct. Cost is still the same. Okay. Yep. 
um, and Johnston Road planter box installation. Uh, so uh, so twenty thousand dollars was approved in 2019. Uh, we spent four thousand uh, in 2019, and we've got a three month waiting period on the boxes themselves. So that's why we haven't spent the full amount because we have no boxers boxes yet to spend it on. Okay. Any questions? Nope. I actually don't really care much for flowers. <laughs> I like trees. I think we should plant more. Uh, this is, you know, not my area to be involved in, but I think we should plant more green shrubs that don't need to be re redone constantly. Well, Madam Mayor, the BC Hydro regreening project grant is due January 31, and I will Wonderful. ensure that we apply for it. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, any questions on that? Nope. Okay, um, McLean Mill Capital Projects, $30,000. Correct, so similar to previous years, uh, the City of Port Alberni's contribution would be 30, and then the uh, 90 would be divided between the Parks Canada cost sharing grant of 60, and then the ACRD of 30. So we have, uh, as you'll see at my, my monthly report coming up next week, that our, uh, our 2019 grant finished on time and uh, under budget, and so that grant is complete and we've already submitted submitted our application for the 2020 period. So we're just waiting to hear on that. Great. Okay, seeing no questions. Um, moving down to aquatic center pool repairs. So we're coming up on 53 years of, uh, of operation. Of course, we're still the, uh, the oldest non-retrofitted uh, swimming pool, I believe, in Canada now, which is uh, quite an interesting That's tagline we can, uh, <laughs> we can invest in. Uh, so this $100,000 is a placeholder for uh, items that every annual shutdown, which is typically in the summer months, uh, that we do things like uh, refurbish pumps, rewind motors, uh, handle some tiling, masonry work, that sort of thing uh, around the facility. So it's a bit of a standing number, which will evolve, of course, the, the older the, the facility gets, of course, the more we need to invest. But at this stage, I'm comfortable with maintaining the 100,000. Okay, thank you. Any questions on that? Councillor Poon. Thanks. Uh, what's the history of um, the repair works that have taken place over the last few years and how much do we normally spend? Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd be happy to bring back a report if Council wishes uh, outlining in whatever detail uh, you like for, for uh, previous shutdowns, if you care. I don't think that's necessary, but okay. I mean, just the ballpark. Uh, so it would be, be similar to what we have there. That's what our, our numbers are based on, what the, the typical spending has been over the, the uh, past number of years. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, moving down. Uh, the Curling Club ice plant replacement. We allocated that 40000 a few years ago. Is that something that is happening, or should we unallocate it? <laughs> I, would, I would love to think that uh, the allocation will, will stick the score on the change from previous years. So we did commit to it in February 2018. Uh, the Curling Club was unsuccessful in, uh, in grant opportunities. And so one of the changes we've made is actually making a commitment for an additional agreement to show that the City of Port Alberni is keen to continue their relationship with the Curling Club in hopes that the Curling Club can leverage leverage that commitment from the city to their grant funders. So I haven't heard at this stage uh, if it's been successful or what the timeline is, but our hope is that uh, with those, uh, that length of agreement, it will be successful. Not additional funds, though. Correct. Just that additional time that, okay. we're, that we're happy to be involved with the Curling Club. Okay, great. Are there any questions on that? Echo Park Fieldhouse Furnace Number Two. Did we do Furnace Number One last year? Uh, I, yes, we did. There was a furnace project <laughs> last year. Yes. So after after Furnace Number One comes Furnace Number Two, and uh, so this uh, this furnace is at its end of life. So the the cost represented there uh, is that the the parts are no longer available. So we're at a spot where we need to replace. Okay. Questions. Okay, and Echo Park Fieldhouse security cameras. So uh, obviously in increasing uh, public safety uh, and also a an ability to protect our infrastructure is what, uh, what we install cameras for. Okay, are there any questions on that? Seeing none, um, could I just interject for a second? Um, CAO, we funded last year um, a second round of funding, $25,000 for the security enhancement program. Um, and I don't think that second round of funding actually went out advertised. Um, if we could just follow up on that, because I know there were there was a lot of 
people online asking when it would be coming out. And we had committed that that round of funding would be available to commercial and residential. Um, and I think we, we had just allocated the first round around the time that we, because um, the first okay. program took a, quite a long time to get moving. We'll check um, into it. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Where were we here? Small equipment. small equipment. So the small equipment includes items such as a suction cup attachment for a forklift. So when we're replacing uh, the, the glass, the tempered pa panels of glass on either ice sheet, we'd have the ability to um, use a suction, cu suction cup attachment, which would uh, reduce the impact on our staff. So less uh, manual labor. Um, each panel uh, weighs hundreds of pounds, so the ability to, to use a uh, machine as opposed to just uh, uh, human power is, is ideal. Um, that, that number also includes uh, an ice edger as well as an air conditioning unit for the server room to ensure that uh, the technology is kept at a reduced temperature. Okay, are there questions on this? Uh, my only question is that um, we often see these types of projects um, in Parks and Rec coming under general, where in other um, departments, more projects seem to come under IRF. Um, are we maybe not, I mean, I, you have a large department, but I'm wondering if some of these things we should be, um, are they new equipment or should we be contributing in IRF and funding them through IRF potentially in the future? Um, yeah, just yeah, a I'd, thought. yeah, I'd be happy to, to review with our finance department to see where we've got opportunities to look at IRF. Absolutely. Okay, okay perfect. Okay, and multiplex, uh, replace the warehouser lighting. Yeah, so uh, in 2019, $110,000 was approved. And so as we discussed uh, this time last year uh, during budget, was that we would spend $10,000 in research and because the technology moves so quickly with things like lighting um, to build a plan that's suitable at the time where we're, uh, where we're looking to replace and then rolling over the remaining $100,000 for in 2020 to complete the project. Okay, perfect. Are there any questions on that? Councillor. So 100,000 will get it in? Uh, that is the hope. We haven't uh, distributed the RFP at this stage, but we have been in touch with various uh, contractors and suppliers to see if that's an option. So uh, we're still waiting for final word that 100,000 will get the job complete. And that comes out of carbon tax, is that right? Uh, is yes. That the note okay. Yeah. Oh, get rid of those metal hell I'd like. <laughs> go into uh, much conversation on the clock tower today if we're going to get a report in the future um, kind of reviewing the project except that it looks like it's 250,000 okay and I would defer to uh, CA apply on okay. that are there any questions from council on that right now or are we okay to wait until we have a report on the full project okay I'm seeing okay to wait wonderful thank you uh, okay and that I believe is all of the 2020 Projects, I think. Oh, water. Are there projects there? Oh, yeah, there are, just not funded from general. Okay. Council, are there any questions on the waterworks projects? Okay, seeing no questions on the waterworks projects. Any questions on the sewer projects outside of that very large number that we'll have a report on next week? Okay. Seeing none, that brings us to the end of the 2020 capital. That was easy. <laughs> okay. Only five more pieces of the whole to cover it all. That's right, we'll be there. <laughs> okay, so this brings us to the point in our um, council meeting where we have an opportunity for public um, input if any members, if any members of the public would like to ask questions. Seeing nobody getting up at wanting to ask questions, um, we I think the next or this opportunity is for us to have a quick discussion about um, public engagement going forward and what council is um, <coughs> what we would like to see. There's been mention of potentially um, having an opportunity for more of an e-town hall um, type meeting or for questions to be asked through social media. Okay. 
maybe CAO would like to uh, talk about next steps. Madam Mayor, um, we, we put a lot of information in front of you. Thank you for your patience. Um, at the end of last year, and now we've walked through the Capitol. Um, pending any more questions from Council, it's really time for Council to tell us where you want to go. You, um, either tell us what you want to modify in the draft budget or tell us how you want to, um, if you want to, and how you want to engage um, the, the public. So um, if you want to do an e-town hall, for example, we could do that. Davina's got a bit of a presentation keyed up, teed up, so maybe I'll stop talking and, and let Davina lead this. Uh, actually, um, Madam Mayor, the uh, slide is on the screen. Um, as the CAO has mentioned, we've, we've undertaken a number of steps to get to where we are this evening and had, had several meetings thus far. Um, so looking for some direction as to um, where we go from here in regards to public engagement. Um, any other uh, amendments that, that Council wants to see at this point? Um, as of now, um, the next Committee of the Whole scheduled meeting is February the 18th, but we can schedule as many other meetings in whatever format that Council uh, would like to see those. So, so at this point, really looking for some more input from Council as to the, the public piece of this. Okay. Um, how would Council like to move forward? I certainly think we want another uh, meeting before um, February 18th. Um, see you. Madam Mayor, I'm wondering if Council wants to, as you say, have another meeting, uh, get the budget further refined, and then take that to the public and say, hey, did we get this right? Or do you want to take input first and see where, where um, public priorities are and then make your changes to the budget based on that? Council, Councillor Corbiel. I'm just wondering, would it be possible to do something similar to what we as a council did, where we went over the budget, came up with questions, sent them in, and then, you know, I thought what we did today was um, saved a lot of time, and uh, we got uh, uh, quite a bit accomplished in a fairly short period of time. So maybe, maybe citizens could have that same opportunity to send the questions in, and you can filter them out if they're. You know, if they don't make any sense at all, you just dump them. But uh, if they're good questions, give the answers, and we could do it in a similar format as we did today. I think we definitely could should do something like that. Um, my feeling is that we do not have the budget. We haven't made any changes to the budget yet. Um, I think that if we put this budget currently out to um, the public for input, um, the I think we're going to get a lot of suggestions of um, changes that we likely would be looking to make anyways. Um, and I think we're going to give the perception to the public that this is the budget that we're moving forward with. I, um, and you know, there's something to be said certainly for asking for input before we make decisions, but I do think that um, there's some changes that as a council we likely are pretty, you know, set on that we want to make um, before we ask for, you know, is this right or not? Um, so I would prefer that we set another um, budget meeting and I think that we've now done one at 4 p.m. I think did we do one at 7 or have they both been at 4 I think the initial presentations were at 6 p.m. okay okay um, we've had conversation about um, we've had conversation about the budget at our regular meetings of council so maybe we should try a 6 or a 7 p.m. as well um, I think we should certainly be doing some kind of um, online. I know that we, we advertise the meetings online, but maybe we can advertise that we will, you know, through Facebook, take um, questions online at our next, at the end of our next budget meeting or something like that, um, after we've had the opportunity to go through and make changes. Um, I think the next meeting is when we should go through and, um, you know, decide if we want all of these capital projects in, decide if there's changes to be made. Um, if we have specific changes we would like to make, um, you know, see additions or reductions in specific um, departments, we can either ask for how we would potentially do that prior so that staff could bring us reports, um, or we could ask for those options at our next budget meeting. Okay, I'm not getting a lot of feedback here. <laughs> Sure. Just, I'm, I'm, 
I think that we need to do that work as council before we do the public engagement. I, I'm still not completely fluent or comfortable with the budget that we have before us. I think there's still more uh, line by line items. I've got questions about the 5.9% and how it applies to the industrial taxes and uh, business tax and stuff like that. So there's just a bunch more questions that need to be um, fleshed out. I would suspect that there will probably be some areas where we'll ask department heads to go back and look very seriously and very hard at their departmental budgets. And um, Madam Mayor, you may just say, hey, look, you got to come back and present something revised within a percentage or whatever we feel is comfortable as a council. But, uh, but I, I like the E-Town Hall. I think, I can't remember if we did one last year or I think it was no, a year before we did it. I think we did one, uh, I know we did one two years ago, mm -hmm. and, and actually it was really good. I was surprised at the amount of e-input, and we, could, we were able to do that live as things were going on. So peop, I think some people feel more comfortable in their home setting rather than being in here and getting up in front of people as well. But uh, I think it would be a big mistake if we didn't uh, do some sort of public consultation for sure. Absolutely. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I agree we need one more kick at this one before we, we go public. And uh, if we do an electronic input, like we'll, we'll take one more kick at this and then we'll go back to maybe even the cow meet, committee of the whole meeting on the 18th and then have it open, electronic open forum. Okay. Would work for me. Okay. Councillor Poon. Thank you. I agree that we should have a online input um, structure and um, to have another um, opportunity to do so. Um, I think some people are just more comfortable when they're hiding behind their screens and keyboards. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> Councillor Corbiel, any thoughts? Uh, no, I agree with what uh, has been said that uh, maybe we need to have one more kick at the can and then uh, open it up for uh, input from the uh, community. Okay, Councillor Solta. So definitely I agree with everybody here at this table. Um, I do agree that, um, where do I wanna go with this? I just have a question for the CAO actually. CAO, how much of a percentage do we need to, or how much, how much dollars do we need to bring down the budget a percent? Um, Roslyn can tell us that. Yeah, it just to be depends if we're talking percent on the budget increase or, or on a on single family residence average. No, on on the budget itself. Like so, if we're from six percent to bring bring it down five percent, how much? Do we I calculated need? it based on average single family residence because I thought that's what you might want to go for. Um, so if I, <laughs> I'll give you that number. Uh, so for every increase or decrease in percentage, uh, so an example, we're at uh, 5.2. 5, 5 if you wanted to go down to 4.2, that's $140,000. Okay. Okay. Because I'm not very comfortable with the budget, although I would love to have all this. I mean, we need to move forward somewhere, but because of the strike and all these people that are affected and that, I would like to see us move where we bring it down this year and then bring it up to where we need to next year just and i know we can't do that with every strike but this has been a long one mm -hmm. and people are having a hard time finding mortgages the bank or paying their mortgage and the bank is trying to work with them on this but how long will they do that for so i'm quite uncomfortable with that at this moment thank you sure councillor Paulson. I'm, I'm a little bit confused because i see 5.9 percent as a number, and you just mentioned 5.2. So for the uninitiated. <laughs> I was somewhat confused on that as well because the um, report we have in our agenda on page 24, if we could bring it up, um, it's listed 24 on the agenda. Um, it shows, oh no, it is 5.2. So what did I see? I thought I saw 5.9 earlier in the single I family. I think it's earlier. In That's the, the actual budget increase. Right. Okay. Correct, Madam Mayor. So the, the budget increase, so when we're looking at total tax dollars are, uh, yeah, so right up above uh, our 24.5 million. When we look at that, that's, that's our actual tax dollars 
required to fund our budget. So that is the 5.9%. And when we look at the 5.2%, that's when we're looking at the average single family impact. Perfect. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. So we have more, um, more changes to come because um, we have not talked about the train or we have not put any money in the budget for the train. If we want to, then we have to recognize that will drive this up past 5.2%. Um, we've heard that there is not the full amount of borrowing required for the sewage lagoon project, um, which, you know, I don't see that as something we have a choice whether we want to move forward on based uh, or based on. We are moving forward with that project so that those funds need to be added to the budget. Um, so this is going to be higher than um, the 5.2 that we're currently sitting at. Um, I think at the next council meeting, I would like to see us um, go through and make any suggested changes or any changes that we want to propose changing. So if council could try to come prepared to that meeting with things we would like to either add in or take out of the budget, we won't go through it, um, or we certainly could go through it line by line, but we've done that now. I think council should bring the proposed changes. For lines that, um, or you know, changes beyond, I think we often just go to the capital because we can see what's the, what the capital projects cost, where they're being funded from. It's more difficult to make a change to an operating budget because we don't have as full of an understanding of um, where those, what's in those numbers. Um, if council, does want to look at um, any changes to anything beyond the capital budget, I think um, we need to be prepared to ask the managers for a report on how we could make a possible change in whichever department that we're looking at. And then we won't have that information next meeting. We would have it at the following budget meeting um, because council would need to pass a motion um, to get that information. Unless there's any areas that today council would like to request how do we save this much money in this area? And I don't know if we're prepared to give that direction today or make those requests. So I think that that's what council needs to come um, prepared to do at our next budget meeting. And we'll leave it to staff to, um, to schedule the next meeting. And there's a report coming on fiber optics, right? There's a report coming on fiber optics. There's no money in the budget for fiber optics. Yeah. City clerk. I just wanted to comment, Madam Mayor, that it looks like February 3rd might be a good okay. um, date for our next committee, the whole meeting. Okay. That's for now. Okay. All right. Are there any, is there any information we want to request tonight? Seeing none. Would somebody like to move? I actually do have a request okay. regarding the Third Avenue. I mean, the Third Avenue project. How can we do that in phases, maybe instead of all at once? Or is that four hundred thousand dollar that was mentioned in it? Sorry, it's not on my screen right now. Is that um, a matching grant? How does that work? And so maybe that could be a project that we could look at. And, and I think we are already getting a report on that for our next council meeting. Okay. So um, we will have that information and be able to have that conversation prior to the next budget meeting. So if we want to make changes to that project, we would have the information to do that. Thank you. Okay. A lot of reports coming. Okay. Um, Councillor Soldo, would you like to move adjournment? Move to adjourn. All in favor. Carried. Thank you.